Ready to proceed? Okay. All right. Good afternoon, and welcome to this online hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Ottawa. And by the way, on behalf of the members of the committee and staff of the Committee of Adjustment, we wish you all a very happy and hopefully healthy new year. The Committee of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial tribunal appointed by City Council to make decisions on certain types of applications under the Planning Act. My name is John Blatherwick, and I'll be chairing this hearing today. With me are my fellow panel members, Bonnie oak Charles, Stan Wilder, Heather McLean, and Michael Wildman. Please note that this video conference is being live streamed on YouTube. This video will be archived along with today's agenda on the city's website. Before we begin, we have a few items to outline for your information. While the issues surrounding development in the city are broad, our mandate is quite limited. The committee cannot consider aspects of the proposal that are not related to the required variances, noise, pollution, property maintenance, property values, prosecution for illegal construction, personal comments regarding neighbors, agents, or applicants, additional variances without proper public notice. If there is an identified need for an additional variance or variances, including an increase in the extent of the relief required, a re recirculation of the application is required. As part of this public, the statutory public notice requirements, each applicant was required to post a sign on the property and file a statutory declaration confirming the sign posting. And for today's hearing, I don't believe we have any of those. Yes. So there will be a uh, sworn oath for the sign posting required for all agents or, uh, and or applicants who are before us today. Regarding quorum, if this is lost during the hearing, due to a technical difficulties, the proceedings will be paused to allow time for the resolution of the issue. Failing the ability to reinstate quorum, hearing of the items remaining resume at the onset, outset, pardon me, of the next regularly scheduled meeting of the committee. In terms of the hearing process, listed on the agenda and appearing on the screen are the applications we will hear today. For the sake of efficiency, the committee may deal with agenda items in a different order. Note that the committee members have reviewed the application materials prior to this hearing and any written submissions received in support or in opposition. In addition, the committee will hear today oral submissions from any interested parties as part of our proceedings. The committee may ask for a brief presentation by the applicant, followed by questions from the members where clarification may be needed. The public submissions portion of the hearing will then begin and the, any interested parties will be invited to make their submissions to the committee. Panel members may then ask follow-up questions where added clarification may be required. When you are called upon to provide your comments, we will ask you to do the following. Start with stating your name and municipal address for the record. We may ask you to spell your name. Then begin your submission by addressing your comments to the panel members. You may ask questions, but please direct them only to the chair. Please limit your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Any exceptions will be at the committee's discretion. We have a very long agenda today, ladies and gentlemen, so we are going to hold to the five minute requirement. Once all interested parties have had an opportunity to address the panel, the public submissions portion of the hearing will then be closed. The committee will then make an oral decision to either grant or deny the application. The committee may also choose to reserve its decision. In such case, the panel will deliberate further on the evidence presented immediately following adjournment of the public hearing. In either case, the committee will send within 10 days of its decision and to all the parties and to those who have requested it a written decision that sets out the reasons for the decision. All decisions of the committee are subject to a 20 day appeal period during which the decision can be appealed to the local, pardon me, the local or the Ontario Land Tribunal for a fee. Uh, before we begin, are there any declarations of interest to any of the panel members for either this application or these, these applications or the ones before, between, before panel two or three today? Okay. We have uh, minutes to confirm. Last year, the minutes of November the 3rd, November the 17th, and December the 8th, 2021. Regarding November the 3rd, 2021, all in favor of the minutes as, as provided, no changes necessary. Minutes are adopted. Uh, regarding the 17th, same question is asked, any changes necessary, all in favor of the minutes being adopted as, as provided. And for December the 8th, the same thing, any changes needed, all in favor, okay, fine. So 
So we'll begin this application, these applications with the, uh, the applications that are before us for adjournment. And the uh, first application before us for adjournment is item number four on the agenda, 349 and 351 Sherwin Drive. Uh, this adjournment request is from the Planning Department. The Planning Department, care to articulate the request, please? Yes, good, af good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. You hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Uh, so planning department has no concerns with the severance itself, but we are concerned about the severance line as it uh, presented on the site plan and on the draft our plans filed and possible non-compliances with uh, zoning bylaw where the minor variances were not filed. I believe the agent is Mr. Jell Katsi. Is he there? Yes, I'm here. And you <laughs> concur with the adjournment, Mr. Jell Katsi? Yes. yes. Okay. I, I believe we're adjourning this uh, to the, the hearing of the 2nd of February. Yes. Okay. All right. All in favor of adjourning this application until February the 2nd. All right. The application is adjourned until then. Thank you very much. The next application that is up for adjournment, applications, I should say, items nine and 10. And this regards 1371, 1371A, 1377B, Maxine Street. Um, and these uh, requests, the request for adjournment have come from the Hmm. The neighbors, I believe. And I believe is Mr. Hume is the uh, is the agent? Yes. His application. Hume. All right. You're aware of the adjournment request, Mr. Yep. Hume? And we concur with um, with the request, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're happy to come back on February 2nd. Are any of the neighbors who put in the request with us today? Uh, yes, I'm here. Could you identify yourself, please, sir? Uh, I'm Maxime Leroux. I'm the neighbor of the property. Okay. So, uh, we have a request from you folks to, to, to uh, push this back. Uh, the next hearing uh, will be on the 2nd of February, which is three weeks. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what we'll do then, uh, all in favor of adjourning the application until the 2nd of February? All right, application is adjourned until then. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. See you in uh, three weeks. The next application that's up for adjournment is item 11 on the agenda, 275 Carling Avenue. And this adjournment has, uh, has come from, from neighbors as well. Any of the neighbors who have requested adjournment can identify themselves, please and speak to the adjournment. Hello, it's Sue Stefko from the Glebe Annex Community Association. I requested and, an adjournment. And for, your, and for for the record, your address, please? Uh, 316A Bell Street South. Okay. And just please articulate your request for an adjournment. Uh, we request that this item um, be given more time to consult with the community. Uh, the notification came in right before Christmas. Many people missed it. The community association itself weren't notified until the day before comments were due. Um, and because this is a community-wide concern issue, we've been working on this issue as a community association since 2012. Um, mm -hmm. We feel that uh, we would like to take the time to consult with the community members um, about it, uh, particularly as it wasn't really fully understood what the implications for the community were once we received the notification. So since then, we have spoken to both Katasa and Foten, and we have a better understanding, but now we uh, just need, need to complete the process of taking it to the community. Okay. And I believe Mr. Bolduc is the, uh, is the agent for the, for the Katasa group. 
It's uh, Mr. Trombley. I'm here for Jacob Bolduc today. All right. That's, that's full 10, correct, Mr. Trombley? Yes, it is. All right. You're aware of the neighbor's request? Yep. And you concur? We do. All right. Um, and so the 2nd of February, there is space on the agenda. That's in three weeks. Uh, so if we're okay with that, we'll adjourn this until the until the Feb 2nd of February. You folks all right with that date? We are, yes. Okay. And before before we uh, finish with this item, I'd ask that the, uh, that the planning department provide the committee with some uh, information regarding mechanical caps. Um, members of the committee have a question on how such a large mechanical cap can get built on the top of an apartment building. Uh, so we need to get some understanding of, of what kind of formula is used to uh, determine the size, the required size of the mechanical cap on, uh, on buildings like this. And if you could have that for us before the 2nd of February, Ms. Pecula, that would be appreciated. Yes, sure, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Thanks. We'll adjourn this. All in favor of adjourning this until the 2nd of February then? All right. The application is adjourned. We'll see you folks then. Thank you. And there's uh, the next item that is up for adjournment. Item 20 and 21. Um, these are applications for 364 Lanark Avenue and 264 Royal. I believe Mr. West is the agent for the applicant. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. All right. Um, the reason for the adjournment request, Mr. West? Uh, we've met with municipal forestry staff and are now undertaking a redesign of the uh, of one half of the building based off of their comments. So hoping we're able to provide the city with um, sufficient, uh, sufficient drawings to satisfy their comments on the tree. Okay. Uh, so is, is February 2nd, sufficient amount of time to undertake what you're doing right now? We believe it is. Okay. Mr. Chown, anything to add? No? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right. All in favor of adjourning this application until the 2nd of February to allow this, these materials to be updated in the designs. Okay. All right. We'll adjourn this until the uh, until it's February 2nd. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay. And that concludes the adjournment requests. This hearing will now move to the regular agenda items. Sorry, Mr. Chair. We did receive a late re um, request for adjournment item number 19. 88 or Abigail. And the adjournment request came from whom? From the agent, Mr. Jalkotsky. There's Mr. Jalkotsky there. Mr. Jalkotsky. Please yes. articulate your request for an adjournment to uh, application number 19. Yes, I just, yeah. I just received from uh, Mr. Craig Hamilton the uh, S, the streetscape analysis uh, uh, report. Um, we don't agree on the streetscape analysis uh, uh, that was completed. Uh, they have a non-concurrence letter, so my client has asked that we adjourn uh, this application until we can resolve the streetscape analysis uh, with uh, with the planner. And how long will that take, Mr. Jelkazi? I would not expect it to take longer than two weeks. So if we adjourn this to the 2nd of February, you can have the matter resolved by then? Yes. Um, as I say, I just received uh, his actual report uh, about uh, an hour before the hearing, and I still haven't received his uh, 
design um, the 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 drawing that uh, accompanies that report. Okay, Mr. Hamilton, uh, if we adjourn this to the second of February, is that sufficient time? Yes, I believe so. Okay, Mr. Mr. Wilder, you had a comment. Yes, Mr. Jolkutsi, I'm sure you're aware. Um, you dealt with this before. Are you sure you're aware with this application of the concern? I realize the variance requested is not significant necessarily, but obviously there is great concern uh, by all residents of the street. I mean, all residents, it seems from the petition and likewise. I would encourage you, it's not necessary, but I would encourage you um, to at least uh, um, maybe to lay some of their concerns um, and meet with them if at all possible. I see the Woodruff, maybe it can be done through the Woodruff North Community Association because uh, obviously they've commented and have concerns as well. I would strongly suggest that I would like to uh, hear back at the next meeting when this comes forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilder. Uh, anyone from the Community Association or the neighborhood speak to this adjournment request? I can't hear you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, I can, and I agree to the adjournment. As your your name and address, please. My name's Susan Glass, okay. and I'm at two one six three Saunders Avenue. And you're with the what Woodruff North Community Association as well. I am. Okay, and so the neighbors are okay with a, an adjournment to the second of February to resolve this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Jalakazi, Miss Hamilton. Glass. Uh, all in favor of adjourning this application until we have a oh, court to the coordinator. Do we still have room on the 2nd of February agenda for another item? Mr. Chair, you'll be up to 22 applications on February 2nd. So that's, that's about it for February the 2nd then. Okay. All right. I think we can, uh, we can do that. All right, all in favor of adjourning this application until the 2nd of February. All right, good job. Application is adjourned. Okay. Now, get on to the regular application. Oh. First item. Agenda today. Uh, your agenda is uh, 254 Carlton Avenue. And this is a consent to subdivide the property in two separate parcels of the land to establish separate ownerships for a two story semi detached dwelling currently under construction. Um, we note that, um, that the file numbers and the public notice that the file numbers were, the file numbers were wrong and file number identified as B's. B00053 should have been identified as B00458, and that uh, file number B00054 should have been identified as B00459. And that minor variance applications uh, have been removed from this, from this application. So the agent for this application is Mitchell Leakman, I believe. That's correct, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I'm um, a solicitor with uh, Rasmussen Star Ready for the applicant. All right. Okay. You're aware of the uh, of the conditions that are being requested? Uh, no, I don't believe we've seen the conditions. Only uh, the cash comments. And Cash and Lube Parkland, Street Planning Plan, Independent Services have identified for both severed and retained lots, uh, accessory structure demolished in accordance with the demolition permit, grading and drainage plan to be provided, um, an agreement regarding an active railway nearby, and the uh, 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 joint use and maintenance agreement as well. Yes, so those are. Those are pretty standard conditions from the indeed. planning department. Yes. And they correspond to what was previously granted. This was previously the subject of a consent uh, that had lapsed. Questions from members of the committee? All in favor of granting this consent as applied for with that modification in the file numbers? Consent's granted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
This application we'll deal with is 500 Everett Avenue. And these are minor variances to produce, produce, permit reduced northerly and southerly interior side yard setbacks, as well as an increased driveway width, and is proposed to construct a new two-story addition to the rear of an existing two-story detached dwelling, as well as an attached single car garage addition. And the agent is Chloe Kantorsky. Hello, that's correct. Could you have your address for good afternoon? Could I have your address for the record, please? My address for the record, yeah, it's 492 Fox Hall Way, Canada. Okay. Okay. Um, so, very briefly, Ms. Kantorsky, please. Okay. Um, sorry, Mr. Chair. My name is Chloe uh, Kantorsky. Oh, pardon me. I have, oh, I, have to, I have to administer the oath. Okay. I haven't done this since December. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? Yes, that's correct. Okay, okay. please proceed. Okay, I am the agent representing the homeowners at residential address 500 Everett Avenue. We propose to construct the following, I'll just summarize that, a new one and two story addition to be built at the rear of the existing two story detached house, requires the following minor variances to be sought, to permit a reduced interior side yard setback to 1.29 meters, whereas the bylaw allows 1.5 meters minimum. And for the attached single car garage addition, the minor variances that are being sought are to reduce the interior side yard setback to 0.45, meters, whereas the bylaw allows 1.5 meters minimum for interior side yards. Another variance is uh, permission to request to formalize existing driver situation as legally non-compliant in terms of existing. So if you could refer to page two of the presentation, I'm not sure if that is up there as one. Okay, page two. Uh, this just shows that the streetscape character analysis results allow for a front facing garage to be permitted but that is not one of the variances that are being requested today. Um, if you can refer to page three, this just shows uh, noted existing characteristics of the streetscape. So there's an eclectic mix of housing styles, a single and two-story detached, semi-detached, single-family homes, and townhome residential building types. There is a predominant pattern of front-facing attached garages and front-yard parking, also with rear-yard parking, uh, hard surface, and asphalt driveways. Uh, so I'm just going to refer to the four tests. Uh, number one, this variance is minor. Um, the mass and height of the proposed developments will not create any negative impacts for abutting property owners related to loss of sunlight, privacy, or views, nor any significant issues related to access, trees, parking, drainage, traffic, or noise. This is evidenced and supported in immediate neighbors' letters of support for all of the variances requested. If you can just refer to page four of the site plan, um, so the variance is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the property. The variance was requested to show an approach and adherence to the established neighborhood building mapping and are compatible with the existing pattern of development of the built form. And as such, positively contribute to the characteristics of the streetscape's existing pattern of development and that of the local neighborhood area. The proposed one-story building addition is set back at 13.34 meters from the front yard property line to the rear of the existing two-story house. This addition replaces an existing, dilapidated, vinyl-sided, one-story addition, which is an established low-profile element of the existing built environment of the house and contributes to the existing characteristics of the local streetscape with its existing presence. The new addition, which is requested to be set back at 1.29 meters from the interior side yard, from the interior property line, uh, will actually serve to improve the existing conditions for both the house and the street by improving the quality of construction and visual representation of itself to the street. The present location of the existing detached single car garage setback at 16.9 meters from the print property line results in a long extended area of existing asphalt driveway with a parked car visuals for the streetscape. The proposed location of the new attached garage addition set back at 12.12 .12 meters from the front property line will serve to significantly reduce the existing area of asphalt driveway and will contribute to lessen the negative health impacts of the urban heat island effect on the locale. It will also serve to increase the rear yard screen space of the property, including the provision of appropriate rear yard treatment of a 4.5 meter minimum soft landscape buffer. 
The proposed location of the new attached garage addition, set back at 0.45 meters measured, measured from the interior side yard property line, is consistent with the existing detached garage interior side yard setback. This will ensure that the impact of the adjoining neighbors existing pattern of use on their property will not be impacted at all. This is also evidenced and supported in immediate neighbors' letters of support for all variances. The general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw is maintained. The proposed attached garage addition is permitted to be front facing according to the mature neighborhood overlay requirements of the FCA results. It also adheres to zoning bylaw provision of minimum front yard setback of six meters from the property line. It also adheres to the zoning bylaw provision of minimum garage wall setback from the existing front wall of the house by a minimum of 0 0.6 meters at 6.01 meters. Providing such a setback serves to reduce the visibility aspect of the garage development and allows the house to address its dominant presence of character to the street. The house is the primary and the garage addition is the secondary visual aspect. The general intent and purpose of the official plan is maintained. Maintaining and being sensitive to the established built environment is critical to a community's sense of place, well-being and identity. The proposed development of the applicant's property provides a good example of sensible and respectful urban renewal, regeneration and intensification of existing building stock and housing design that is consistent with the existing character of the local community and aligns with the broad public interest of the neighborhood by fitting well within the existing context. The proposed developments contribute positively to sustainable land development within the city of Ottawa's urban core, constituting good land use and ultimately reducing urban sprawl. They are also appropriate for this location and provide improved and compatible housing choice within the local neighborhood. Um, the proposed developments are designed to be compatible with the building design of the existing home and are consistent with the adjacent properties existing residential built forms and patterns within the immediate context, which serves to enhance, protect and improve upon existing site conditions for both the homeowners of 500 Everett Avenue and the local residents of the neighborhood. And that's the summary of the project. Okay. You said that the, uh, and I'm referring to variance B, mm -hmm. northern, northern interior side yard, that current side yard is 0.45 at the present moment because of the garage that's now in place and it's going to be demolished? That's correct. Yeah, we're sliding, okay. uh, basically the position of the existing garage is just sliding forward on the site being okay. built as a new garage. So is that sufficient, uh, a sufficient amount of space to be able to maintain that building, 0.45 meters? Um, as in maintain the, the siding on, of the I'm just, you know, If there needs to be, there needs to be repairs done, is that a sufficient amount of space to get at the side of the, uh, the side of the new garage um, without, without having to step onto the neighbor's property? I'd have to look into that and confirm that with you, if that would be sufficient space. It depends what kind of maintenance would be required. I think one of the one of the members of, of Mr. Wildman has a question, I believe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, it, it's along the lines of uh, where you were heading. Um, can you tell us about the eave on that side of the building? Uh, is there an, is there a planned eaves trough? Like, where? How does the runoff from the the top of that roof of the new garage? Where is it directed to? Uh, so then it would be directed to either the rear or the front of the property, not to, not to the side. Is so there I going to be an eaves trough there then? There will definitely be an eaves trough there. Okay. Um, all right. And so, yeah, the second question uh, that uh, where the chair was heading, and I, I suppose it's, um, it's already an existing condition to a certain extent with the existing uh, building, but... Um, you know, if you did have to do maintenance on that side of the building, you've got about 16 or so inches, which is not a great deal of room, um, even from the standpoint of constructing it from, from, from that point of view. Um, is your neighbor aware of, of this uh, project in the sense of, um, it, it sounds to me like there's no way to really build this without having some permission to uh, move about on the side of that uh, garage? Is the, is the neighbor at all aware of that? 
Yeah, we actually have a letter of support from the direct neighbour that you're referring to. And as existing, this is a shared driveway. Um, so they, they both use the driveway to access. Um, there's no fence, there's no division between. And so it's classes in it as a shared driveway. Um, but yeah, the neighbour is in full support of this project and does not have any issues with uh, access for construction to actually build the garage. And I, I suppose the constraint um, is in a way, uh, it could be mitigated if the garage were further back and then sort of jogged over, but that would be a fair distance back of of the addition, is that correct? Because you are you really only have that three meter opening. Um, in order to have that three meter opening, you'd almost have to have it quite a bit further back to make it work and comply with the zoning. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I, I'm I'm satisfied uh, with with what I heard. Any other questions? From any of the comments? From any of the members? Prepared to uh, make a decision. All in favor of this application uh, that's before us today for 500 effort. All right. Application is approved. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank okay. you. Next application uh, before us today is item number three. 278 Avondale Avenue. And uh, those are minor variances to permit a reduced lot area, westerly side yard setback, and to permit the construction of an attached front facing garage. Proposed to demolish the existing detached dwelling and metal shed and to construct a new two story dwelling with an attached single car garage. Start video. I believe Mr. Segreto is the agent. Yep. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. And Mr. Segreto, I'll have to go through the, the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do swear. All right. Uh, you're aware of the uh, of the planning department's position in your application? I okay, am. So you're prepared to... Uh, you're prepared to deal with that in your presentation. Um, just before we start, um, variance B needs to be uh, needs to be amended to read to permit reduced side yard setbacks of 1.2 meters, whereas the bylaw requires minimum side yard setbacks of 1.5 meters. Okay. Uh, so that has, that's that's will be amended in the uh, in the decision. All right, Mr. Segreto, please uh, please proceed. Uh, okay, Mr. Chair, can we go to my video, please? Um, this is the subject property which is in front of you here today, uh, two seventy eight Avondale. <clears throat> it's a two story single family dwelling, and um, we are proposing to demolish this. Uh, single family dwelling and construct a new single family dwelling with a single car garage in order to do so uh, with respect to the lot size we have to have variance A which is to reduce the lot width um, sorry variance A to reduce the lot area to 254.7 square meters whereas the bylaw requires 300 square meters and as you've indicated uh, variance B to reduce the side yards to uh, 1.2, whereas the <coughs> side yards are supposed to be 1.5. If you can go to the next slide there, the um, site plan, you can clearly see our site, which is in yellow there. And you can see the two adjacent properties, which uh, abut our property, the one closest to us, you can clearly see that there's an existing single family there with a approximate two foot setback which has been there. We had approximately a two foot setback as well, which tapers off to the back, which is a little bit more than two feet, possibly three, three and a half feet or so. And then the neighbor next door to us, he is about two feet away as well. So with our proposal, if I can go to the next slide, you can clearly see that we're providing at least 1.2 on one side and 1.2 on the other side, which addresses the side yard setbacks. With respect to 
variant say, which is the area. Unfortunately, this is the land that we have and uh, it's been in existence since day one. Now, variant C, you can clearly see that variant C, what we're asking for is actually to allow this single car garage. And if you can go to the next slide, that is the proposal. This house is not out of character with respect to what is in the neighborhood. There are a handful, a dozen or so houses that have been developed in this area. And I will show you that in my presentation with photographs of single family dwellings and semis that have garages that have been constructed in the last six months to a year or so before this bylaw came in. Um, so you can see that we've maintained the property. There's a small driveway there. The existing tree is to remain. And um, next slide, please. This is just outlining the area of, uh, of the uh, project that we're doing. Next slide. Okay, so this is the streetscape analysis, which is all done in green. And then the star indicates the subject property. As you can see, there is a handful of garages um, that are facing the street where the BBA are um, in the particular green areas. And just on the outside, just on the little bit of the outskirt, you're gonna see more garages where the BBA is and on the opposite side as well. So when you're really looking or walking and going up and down the street, this is really no impact in my opinion that this house is gonna cause any adverse uh, complications to this uh, streetscape itself. Um, next slide, please. So these are what exists. You can clearly see 257, 255 Avondale, as I outlined in my map over there. Uh, the garage is there, uh, the existing garage at uh, 266 with one in the back. Next slide, please. There's some more semis with garages there. Again, uh, 289, 287 Avondale, 301 Avondale, A and B. Next slide, please. And then some new builds that were done, I guess, possibly a year or so ago at 269, 263. We're just around up the street a bit. Next slide. So you can clearly see that there is a lot of activity of new construction with new garages. There is also a letter on record that I just went over and I don't know if you guys have looked at it, but there is a neighbor um, across the street. I believe it's uh, Elizabeth Mason that uh, wrote in at 283 Avondale that uh, she doesn't seem to have any issues whatsoever with respect to this proposal going through since she feels that there's 17 out of the 24 new builds that have happened on this street that have front facing garages. And I believe that she says in her letter that she's not opposed to this, uh, to this um, development. I don't know if it, are there are any other letters of objections on file. I do know that my, my clients have spoken with the immediate neighbors uh, to either side of them and behind them. Um, I really do feel that this is good infill and in that this garage should really not be part of uh, a variance that should be denied. That's my presentation, Mr. Chair. And the four tests? The four tests, I believe the variances are minor in nature with respect to lot width, lot area. In this case, we don't have anything on lot width, it's just lot area. With respect to the side yards, those side yards, I believe I've indicated that the house is next door, the format that there are two foot setbacks or so, we're actually adding four feet to the side of those. Also with respect to the driveway, if there were to be a driveway to go from front all the way to the back, you can clearly see that you would have to plow a driveway about 60 feet or so and bring the snow up front. In this particular case, you just have a driveway about 20 feet or so. There's less snow, less plowing to do. And you know what? It just makes common sense in Canada. When you're looking at a garage, 90% of people do park their cars in front of their garage and they do put their... Uh, garbage is their bicycles in the garage, but some people do want to put their cars inside the garage when in, 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 in this Canadian environment that we have. Um, variances are minor. Uh, um, they're desirable. I feel that uh, we're, we're the, inf the infill policies are in place that what we're adding and what we're doing with this particular site uh, fits in well and uh, is uh, part of the, uh, the process to uh, 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 create a new infill intensification. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Segreto. Uh, I believe the planning department has some objections to this application. Mr. Hamilton, I believe, is the author of that report. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff do not have concerns with variants A and B. Um, they are supporting policies in the zoning bylaw and the official plan for these variances. Okay. Uh, staff do oppose variant C to permit the front-facing garage. Um, is our, our usual stance with these variances where the policy clearly defines uh, which elements are and are not permitted as they relate to the streetscape character um, analysis. Uh, we don't feel that this garage element would match the existing character of the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. I believe we also have several of the neighbors who wish to speak. Uh, Mr. Dargavel, I believe is one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And your address for the record, please, sir. Uh, it's 285 Avondale. All right. And you're not in, you're not in favor of this application? No, sir. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak on it. Um, you have uh, five arguments I've made in a written submission. I'm not going to take the time going over those five, five arguments uh, individually. Yes. We have the submission. Yes, we've got it. So I'd like to just get to the, the heart of the matter to me is that uh, the current building at 278 has helped to find the streetscape of the mature neighborhood for decades, for possibly even a century. Uh, the applicants wish to essentially redevelop the site with a very similar building. The only significant difference is that front facing attached garage, which is out of character with the uh, streetscape of the street. Um, to me, there is no added community development uh, basis to uh, support the front facing attached garage. Uh, and I encourage you to uphold section 140 and to protect the streetscape of my neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for the, uh, for the presenter and the members of the committee? No. We also have um, Ms. Gagnon and Mr. Chan, who are uh, at 276 Avondale, I believe. Uh, yes, that's correct. Can you hear me? Pardon me? Oh. Uh... Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me? And you are, ma'am? Uh, yes, hello. My name is Catherine Gagnon, and uh, I am a property owner of 276 Avondale Avenue, okay. uh, along with my husband, Richard Chan. Right. Our property is immediately the next door east side property to 278 Avondale. Um, should I continue? Please. Okay, yes. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you had mentioned that uh, variance B is being uh, slightly amended to reflect the variance on the uh, east side for an easterly side yard setback of 1.2 meters. Both side yards, uh, actually. Yes, uh, but that was not actually reflected in the public posting, just on the east side. So uh, as publicly posted, the, there were three variances, A, B, and C, yep. and it was Variance B was only pertaining to the west side, but as I understand, that has now been uh, amended. Amended, yep. It's okay, been amended so to reflect the uh, 1.2 meters on both both of the side yards. Okay, so that was a, a bit uh, for us to decipher as the owners. We just needed that clarity, which we got uh, two days ago. Okay. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to continue by saying, um, you know, we are the next door uh, close by properties and we can appreciate the interest certainly to develop the property at 278 Avondale Avenue with greater square footage. Um, however, we would like to mitigate any impacts on our property at 276 Avondale as a result from this east side yard, side yard setback of 1.2 meters. Um, when we purchased the property at 276 Avondale some 20 years ago, the house was already only 0.6 meters from the property line. So therefore having a variance of 1.2 meters on the easterly side of 278 Avondale, that would further contribute to the limited space between our two properties. Um, as Because of this proximity as described, we want to ensure that there is due diligence to safeguard our property against any damages from this new next door construction. Um, some things that my husband and I have, have discussed uh, with, with our family and friends, actually, uh, my brother knows construction quite well. Disturbance of our foundation, 
Our property. And before you, before you continue, we don't deal with these matters at committee. This is quite frankly a discussion you should be having with the property owner and the developer. Okay. And, uh, so uh, we, we have no authority to discuss construction issues uh, at this committee. We're dealing with well. I guess it's about the impacts to our house, Mr. Chair, the disturbance of our foundation. Um, we still can't. We still can't discuss that. That's just Chair, may, you. maybe if maybe if the delegation could be directed to the building department as well, who will be regulating that. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, I just want to quickly say our, our foundation is cinder block, so it, it wouldn't have the strength and durability of today's poured concrete foundation. Um, so I, I do understand the point, though, that this isn't yeah. a committee to hear this. Uh, can I add one more point? Just I was hearing uh, the previous application talk about enough access on the side in terms of accessing the unit. Mm -hmm. um, so on our uh, westerly side, uh, it's going to be very narrow. So access for repairs and the like. Your house is how far from the property line on that side? Um, so our house is uh, okay. from our own property line is 0.6 meters. And then, uh, you know, then there's the 1.2 meter. Uh, yes. Side yard Which, setback. And for your information, the 1.2 meter side yard was the old setback before the uh, before the zoning was revamped in your area to add 0.3 of a meter in, in side yard separation. Okay. Your house, uh, yeah, built, your house was built, obviously built before a zoning bylaw. In the 60s. In the 60s. In the 60s okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, and I Sorry, Mr. Chair, just one more thing. Uh, we weren't actually consulted by the uh, uh, by the owners of uh, 278 Avondale. I, I noticed in the proponent's remarks, he mentioned that we were consulted. Our tenant was. Uh, we, we currently rent the property, but we may live there again uh, in due time. Did you talk to her? No. I talked to the tenant. I didn't know that it's been around. Anything, anything further, Ms. Kenya? Um, no, and I, I appreciate the committee's time uh, to let me yeah. make so these as, comments. As Mr. As Mr. Uh, Wildman has said, the uh, the best thing on the on the construction issue issue is uh, is to talk to the talk to the developer, talk to the property owner, and you can certainly talk to Building Code Services because uh, they will have they will have inspectors on site to ensure that the construction meets the requirements that the City of Ottawa has for new builds in the city. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm a senior policy analyst at the federal government. I have no expertise in this. This is not my wheelhouse. What, yeah. what steps do I take uh, to, to get that process started? Well, I think you need to talk to the, uh, I, I would suggest that you talk to the, uh, to the property owner. Okay. So and uh, the agent first and, and take it from there. If I'm Mr. A, Segreto could help facilitate that, that. I'm contact. sure Mr. Mr. Segreto has been doing this for a long time. I'm sure he can. Correct, Mr. Okay. Segreto? <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Mr. Segreto. You're, you're, you're muted. I will make sure that the owners contact her. I can guarantee you that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hamilton, you had a comment? This is the planner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just going to offer that I can assist Ms. Kenya and navigate the city departments as well. So I, I'm available okay. for assistance. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Any other any other questions from comments from the uh, from the members regarding this application? Yeah. Is there anyone else wishes to speak to this application? And you are, ma'am. Heather Mitchell from the Westboro Community Association. Okay. I don't I don't have you on the speaker. Please, please proceed. Okay, thank you then for letting me uh, uh, speak. Oh, your address for the uh, for the record, please. Uh, I represent the community association. I still need your address for the record. Um, 485 please. Richmond Road. All right, thank you. Please proceed. Sorry. Yeah, um, uh, we appreciate the, the, the retention of the trees in this project. Um, in terms of the garage, any effort to put parking in the back of the building, we appreciate that that's not been attempted. Um, as there have been other um, projects in the neighborhood do have um, backyard parking um, and because it cuts down on amenity space and green space. Um, so we appreciate the retention of the tree. Um, I would ask that the board uh, consider carefully Mr. Dargaville's comments. Um, we have not, he is the only neighbor who's reached out to us directly. 
Uh, Mr. Segreto's group has reached out to us and we truly appreciate that. However, we haven't heard uh, the, the positive comments from neighbors have not been conveyed to us at WCA. Um, uh, WCA at this point will not uh, take a position. Uh, if there's residents that are pro and con, uh, our role is to make sure that uh, everybody's voice is heard and I know that it will uh, at this committee. Um, at that, that being said, we do want to ensure that the process that's been set up and implemented by the city relating uh, to this matter allows for open and transparent consultation, which I think I've just witnessed. Um, mm. That's really all we wanted to say. Um, I just wish that the neighbors who were more pro uh, for the driveway is what I'm speaking of, had have been reached out to us directly or we had have had more of a sense of who they are. Um, that would have been helpful to us. And again, just to conclude, um, just make sure you consider Mr. Dargaval's uh, comments, even although he appears to be the only one coming forward with a concern about, about the garage, do make sure you give him um, his due. <coughs> That's the intent. That's and uh, intent. for any neighbors too, don't forget the Westboro Community Association is also here to help you if you need any help. All right, thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Thank you. Mr. Wildman, you had a comment? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but it did come up during our um, our pre meet, and it what it formed part of the public record. Uh, so, if I could have Mr. Segreto explain to us just how this uh, application meets the intensification policies of the City of Ottawa, you're you're taking one building down and replacing it with one building. You close by saying it meets the intensification models of the uh, and objectives of the city. How so? Well, we, I guess uh, my clients can always uh, add a, an additional unit, I guess, to intensify the building, if that's the question you're asking. No, no, no. Asking. You, you said this application meets the intensification. So what you're saying is what is proposed. It's is actually replacing, for, you're right, Mr. Uh, you're right. It's actually replacing one unit for one unit, and it's not intensifying. It is just replacing one for one, but it is replacing an older building uh, with a new building in this particular area. And there's a history of new development on this street. Um, and as okay. I said, with respect to- So it to does not meet intensification okay. policies of the city. Thank you. I, I just wanted that clarified yep. for the record. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd, I'd like to uh, suggest this one be reserved. Yeah, I was I was gonna say we, shall prob we should probably re <clears throat> reserve on this given the, the, the difference of opinion there seems to be neighbors and the planning department and the developer. <clears throat> Any other comments from the uh, from the panel? No. So we'll, uh, Mr. Segreto, we, uh, I think the, the uh, committee will reserve this decision and you'll receive our, uh, our, uh, our notice within, uh, within 10 days. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much everybody who uh, participated. Next application on the agenda is item item five, two seventy four and two seventy six Clear Street, and this is a consent to subdivide the property into two separate parcels of land to create separate ownership for each half of the existing semi-detached dwelling with one unit on each parcel. And the agent for the applicant is Ms. Kreplin. Is she there? Hello, yes I am. And for the record, your address please. Uh, 274 Clare Street. Okay, all right. So this is, a, this is just a a, con a, a simple consent application to sever the property. Exactly. Okay. You have anything further to add to your uh, to what, what what submitted to us? Uh, we do not at this time. Okay. Are you aware of the conditions that are that are being asked for? Absolutely. Independent services for seven retained parcels, grading and drainage plan provided, the joint use and maintenance agreement, a, a tree planting plan, and a party wall certification. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chair, we will require the oath, please. Yeah, and I have forgotten this again. <laughs> okay. 
do you solemnly have to go through the oath? Do you solemnly mm -hmm. swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do. I'm going to have to get that <laughs> tattooed, to my, tattooed to my forehead in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so nothing, nothing to add. You're aware of the, uh, you're aware of the conditions. Uh, the uh, right of way people said uh, if this driveway changes, you're going to need a right of way and an, an approach permit, private approach permit. Um, there's no concerns from the from the planning department, hydro, conservation authority, and there are no concerns or comments from from neighbors. Any of the members have any comments, concerns regarding this, app this application for consent? All in all those are in favor of granting the consent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that. <laughs> all right, your consent is granted. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much Mr. Chairman. We said the computer would get rid of paper. Ah. <laughs> All right. Now move to item item six on the agenda. One seventy eight, McGilvery Street. And these are minor variances to permit a reduced easterly side yard setback, a reduced rear yard area, and a reduced rear yard setback. It was also proposed to demolish the existing shed and breezeway located at the rear of the property, construct a new one-story entranceway addition and an attached lane facing single car garage with a rooftop patio to be located on the northeast corner of the existing dwelling. And the application for the, uh, the agent for this is Ms. Kantorski again. Is she there? Hi, sorry about that. Hi, I'm here. Okay. All right, Ms. Kantorski. Um, first, before we begin, uh, solemn oath. You solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, before you start uh, driveway width, is it 3.7 meters or 3.89 meters? It is 3.9 meters at its widest okay. towards the garage and 3.7 at its slimmest towards the French uh, property line. It narrows, uh, it's not a straight, straight so driveway. It's, so it's variable width. Yeah, it's tapered. But a minimum of 3.7 to a maximum of 3.9. That's correct, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, if you'd like to proceed, please. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Chloe Kantorski and I'm the agent representing the homeowners at residential address 178 McGillivray Street. They propose to construct the following, a new third story addition, I'm just summarizing, a new third story addition to be built directly on top of the existing two-story detached house footprint. Due to the updated zoning bylaw regulations, certain provisions of this existing house mass in its relationship with the site are at present defined as non-conforming. Therefore, the following line of variance is required to be sought. Uh, a, a reduced front yard setback to 3.3 meters to match the existing two-story house, whereas the bylaw allows 4.5 meters minimum. And B, a reduced interior side yard setback to 0.1 meters as the existing two-story house, whereas the bylaw allows 1.2 meters minimum. 
Also requested is an attached single car garage addition uh, requiring the following minor variances to be sought to permit uh, C, a reduced front yard setback to 3.9 meters, whereas the bylaw allows 4.5 meters minimum. D, an attached uh, front facing garage, uh, where it, as the bylaw based upon the streetscape character analysis does not permit the construction of an attached front facing garage. And, and you're, aware that the, you're aware that the department is opposing that variance? I am aware that right. that's correct. I'm aware of that. So if you could just refer to page two of the presentation. Um, so the streetscape character analysis results conclude, if we look at the four tests, that the, this variance is a minor request. Uh, in terms of percentage, 43% out of the 21 uh, houses have front facing garages and 57% do not have this feature. This is just less than half. This is a precedent for front facing garages. They are located both next door and directly across the street from the subject property. Uh, if you refer to the area key plan, this shows analysis of the entirety of McGillivray Street showing in the color blue and purple, more examples of front facing garages. Uh, the extent of the impact of this proposed development on neighboring properties and the neighborhood as a whole are minor or non-existent as evidence and supported in immediate neighbors' letters of support of all four variances. The mass and height of the proposed developments would not create any negative impacts for abutting property owners related to loss of sunlight, privacy, or views, nor any significant issues related to access, trees, parking, drainage, traffic, or noise. Post developments are compatible with and respect the established physical character of the neighborhood. Um, the development will have zero impact on the neighboring property directly next door, as evident by the fact, if you could just refer, refer to page three, showing the um, local character of the neighboring houses, there's actually a uh, laneway serving residents of 441 to 443 Echo Drive to the rear of the property. So there's a laneway, not actually a building. Um, resident neighbors of 174, so the neighbor that actually shares this laneway with 178 McGilvray has expressed uh, their support for the proposed developments in their documented letters of support. Uh, the variance is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the property. The proposed attached garage addition fits in sensitively with and serves to complete the architectural mapping style and form of the existing house by positively contributing to completing a missing piece of the built form, which at present appears as a void exposing an extended area of existing asphalt driveway for the parked car to the street space. The proposed attached garage addition will serve to contain and protect the unique language and character of the street by blocking or obscuring the existing exposed view of the large prominent rundown four-story multi-unit apartment building, which is located at the rear, the 441 to 443 Echo Drive address. This is also evidence and supported in immediate neighbors' letters of support, particularly uh, number 174 shares this laneway and will benefit from this view being blocked. Um, the proposed attached garage addition by um, significantly reducing the existing area of asphalt driveway will contribute to both lessen the negative visual and health impacts of the urban heat island effect on the locale. Uh, the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw is maintained. The proposing attached garage addition adheres to a zoning bylaw provision of minimum interior side yard setback of 0 0.6 meters from the property line. Um, it is also uh, adhering to the zoning bylaw provision of minimum garage wall setback from the existing front wall of the house by a minimum of 0 0.6 meters. Providing this setback serves to reduce the visibility aspect of the garage development and allows the house to address its existing dominance presence of character to the street. The house is the primary in a garage addition to the secondary visual aspect. The proposed developments meet the following performance standards of the updated zoning bylaw requirements of minimum lot width, lot area, interior side yard setback, rear yard setback, and permitted eve projection in yard of not closer than 0 0.3 meters to lot line. The general intent and purpose of the official plan is maintained. By maintaining and being sensitive to the established built environment, it is critical to a community's sense of place, well-being, and identity. The proposed development of the applicant's property provides a good example of sensible and respectful urban renewal, regeneration, and intensification of existing building stock and housing design that is consistent with the existing character of the local community area and aligns with the broad public interest of the neighborhood, 
by fitting in well with the existing context. The proposed developments contribute positively to sustainable land development within the city's urban core, constituting good land use and ultimately reducing urban sprawl. The proposed developments are appropriate for this location and provide improved and compatible housing choice in the neighborhood. The proposed development of the attached front facing garage is an essential and critical aspect of this intended building project. The homeowner serves professionally as a medical oncologist physician at the Ottawa Hospital Cancer Center requiring emergency travel at all times of the day at night for emergency purposes. The homeowner does have a necessity and a right to protect their private vehicle for use on their property from inclement weather at all times of the year, particularly during Ottawa's extremely harsh winter months. The homeowner therefore has an obligatory social responsibility to provide for the local community's healthcare needs and requirements at a moment's notice. Therefore, it is essential for this project that their private vehicle be ready to operate at once in an urgent situation, enabling this private citizen to fulfill their oath of service and commitment to the public. And just in summary, a focus on the architectural style, scale and design of the built form of the street is equally deserving of the same level of protection and assessment as the requirements of the SCA process that determines the dominant parking patterns of the street. And the proposed development satisfy the sensitive consideration of design of both the architecture and the city streetscape. Thank you. Um, the do, you have elevation, actually, do you have elevations of uh, what you're proposing? Yeah, Any so if jokes? you go to page five, uh, shows the elevations and page six is a 3D view of the proposed development. Uh, I, I understand that the homeowner would like to speak also, if that is possible. Oh yes, that's fine. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much to the committee for hearing our proposal for minor variances. And this is uh, Mr. Vickers. Yes, yeah, sorry, at 178 McGillivray Street. I'm the owner. Okay. Um, thank you again for, for listening to our, uh, our application. Um, our house is over 100 years old. And as you can imagine, there's some quirks to it that we would like to, to fix to suit our family for the addition. Um, in my job as an oncologist at the Ottawa Hospital, uh, I do on-call duties that, that require uh, sometimes urgent and emergent uh, return to the hospital. Sometimes I'm on call for 72 hours at a time. Typically, if I need to come into the hospital after hours, it is to make a decision, you know, in, in an urgent fashion. And I think that having a garage would help, you know, certainly in the winter weather with, uh, with the climate that we live in. So uh, I, I think uh, it, it would be a good addition to our house and, and to our community. Um, as you can see from what Chloe's presented, uh, as I exit my house, I can see two to three garages to the right, another three to the left, two, another one down on the left side, two doors down. Um, we have one vehicle, my wife walks to work. You know, we fully plan to move to electric vehicle within the next year um, uh, once the lease on my new vehicle is up. So I'd just like to say that and, and thank you to the committee for hearing our application. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Um, Ms. Kantorski, you're aware of the uh, of the comments from the neighbors at uh, 180 and 182 McGillivray? Uh, 180 and 182? No, I was sure. not aware of those comments. These are the, uh, I have these are the neighbors out here. Oh, I've got, a, I can read you the, uh, the gist of their just of their um, and their comments is <clears throat> with us um, concerns with water runoff from the roof and want to ensure that this won't affect the foundation walls one assurance that the third floor will not impact us if we wish to build up future and concerns with current flat roof do not do not roof wall deck to be damaged from construction that's it. that's between you and the your your own, the owner and, uh, and the neighbor actually, that does not concern us. I also prefer that no windows on the south side, there'd be no windows on the south side of the third story addition. So that's, you know, the window issue is, uh, is a legitimate one. They're, they're concerned about the loss of, loss of privacy. Um, and I guess we get back to, uh, Mr. Wildman's already asked the question of another applicant. What about Eves? You're gonna, in, uh, with your, uh, Side yard would be the side yard at 0 0.11 meters, um, and you need 1.2 meters. Where are there going to be an eave along that side of the house that drain that, that takes water away from that location? That's correct. Yeah, and, towards the front of the rear. 
All right, and 0.11 meters is a very, very tight spot. How do you intend to access that, that area and to maintain the, the property in, the fu in future? Yeah, that will be uh, an, an area of uh, expertise that the contractor will be able to answer in more detail as to how he actually thinks it plans on constructing this. It's not construction. Uh, construction is another is another issue because you're very very tight to the property line. I'm talking. We're talking about after the, the, the this building goes up, should we approve it? How are you? We're, you got a little over a tenth of a meter. No, I understand and, that that is the existing condition that the house is built to okay. proximity to the line. Yeah, that's fine, but there's a requirement in the bylaw of one point two. Why can't you meet that requirement? As in, you're 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 asking if we could step the building in at the third floor. Well, you got a 1.2 1. 1. 2 side yard requirement, and you're proposing 0.11. Yes, it's mm -hmm. an existing condition, but this is this is a new build. So why can't you meet the why can't you meet the requirement? And again, how do you if it goes to the 0. 0.11 of a meter? What's immediately on the other on immediately on the other side of the property line? Is it open space or another wall? It's another wall. If you look at um, uh, page three, you see the uh, direct neighbor and, and you see the proximity of the house to 178 McGillivray. In the second uh, image at the top. Okay. That's what you're referring that's to. Immediately, yeah. immediately to the left of the, of the subject site is, is the- That's correct. Is, but the third story is above, so yeah, in terms of access at that height, it would be possible, but you're talking about walking between the buildings. Mm -hmm. At present, that perhaps is not entirely possible either. Is so, this, have, you, have you looked at, uh, at building code slash fire code requirements? Yes, uh, we have. A building and what, what do they suggest regarding this, this tight location? Uh, I, I don't recall the uh, fire rate rated uh, resistance that's required, but um, we are planning on adhering to what that is. And it will be um, a metal siding, like a corrugated metal siding that will be on that side and there will be no, no windows at all. No one, okay. All right, but the, the windows will be on the third floor. They'll be the facing floor. this, yeah, facing the front and the rear and the other interior side yard property line, okay. not that one, yeah. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Wilder, you had a question or comment? Um, um, sorry, can you hear me? Again, it comes back to um, the first comment, uh, one of the comments of the uh, abiding neighbors at 180, 182. Have you actually spoken at all with the neighbors at 180, 182? Um, I see the new build that's on obviously at 172, 174, but my real concern is um, the neighbors to the, uh, to the opposite side at 180, 182. And your walls are, well, first of all, I mean, they're concerned about the windows on, this, on the south side of the third edition, uh, of the third floor edition, sorry. Are there windows on that south side? No, the there are not, floor? no windows. No, facing that, pro facing the one, number 180, there are no windows, it's just right. a wall. So this, this house is apparently what uh, your, your client was saying, 100 years old. I'm looking at the property, obviously, uh, abutting it as well. It looks like it's a very old property as well. Um, for all the years, I mean, has there been no uh, need to do any repointing of the brick? Um, how do you, how in the world do you access um, having to repoint or do anything with such a, with such a narrow, impossibly narrow um, space between the uh, two walls? Um, it's a good question and it is an existing condition. It, it asks the question as to how either house could have been built so close in the first place. Well, if part of a one wall happens to, I mean, happens to collapse or, or I mean, never mind, just g general maintenance in terms of repointing a hundred year old house, mortar. I mean, how, how do you, how do you access even your, your client's house, uh, for example? Um, I mean, uh, you know, you're asking again here that point, 
I noticed existing, you're asking for that 0.11 meters. I mean, that, that's from the 1.2, which the bylaw requires today. Um, you know, I sort of have difficulty with variance B, to be honest. Um, all right, uh, that's all, thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, I had an opportunity to speak to the neighbor directly next door and, and we talked about, uh, you know, the concerns obviously with the, with the windows and, and that there weren't gonna be any, any on the south side. Of course, our houses were built a long time ago and, and that space in between, we cannot, we cannot change that. Um, I, I think there is a, a plan possibly by the neighbor to do something on a third story as well. Um, but, but certainly we did, we did chat about the plan renovation. And yeah, they're generally in, in approval, and, and they did send a letter with with their concerns about uh, you know would it impact their ability to to build on the third story and about about the windows. Okay. Mr. Hamilton, the, uh, the the planner that was involved in this file is it Ms. Bicula? It's me, Mr. Chair. And the department's position on variance B. C. On variance uh, with respect to garage? Yeah. Yeah, we're opposing it as being not the representative uh, streetscape character on the street. And the department is fine with, uh, with the proximity of this uh, that this, this altered building will have to uh, its immediately immediate next door neighbor? As uh, Ms. Kantorsky have correctly said, it's technically an existing condition. The third story uh, repeating the footprint. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have no concerns with that, yes. Okay. Because there will be no windows, so. Yeah. And we've heard that it'll be, <clears throat> it'll be fi a fire rated uh, yes. covering on the walls as well. Any other comments, questions from the members of the panel? I think uh, what we'll do is we'll reserve on this application and uh, deliberate on this further at the at the end of this hearing, and uh, you'll reserve you'll receive our uh, our decision our notice of decision um, in ten days. Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Ah, the next application. Next application before us is items seven and eight, 112 to 118, 112A to 118 B Sherbrooke Avenue. It's a consent to subdivide the property into four separate parcels of land to obtain separate ownerships for the newly constructed two story long semi-detached dwelling. Um, <clears throat> I note that uh, this is an already built situation. Uh, we have a number of a number of conditions. There are uh, there are deletions and additions to it. Uh, we can speak to the agent when when they're online. Um, Ms. Hill, I believe is the is the agent. Hi. And your address for the record, please, Ms. Hill. 414 Churchill Avenue North. Okay. All right. Um, read the conditions. Um, existing Hi, dwelling Jeff. removed. Oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? Yes, I swear. Okay, so the uh, condition number one, existing dwelling removed and services capped is no longer valid. Mm -hmm. Independent services for both severed and retained lands, uh, grading and drainage plan, a joint use and maintenance agreement. Um, department has added a noise level agreement for that. Party well certification. Uh, that, that's fine. Yeah, party wall certification is as well. Noise, uh, is the noise agreement different from the party wall certification? I think so. And uh, a, a limiting distance condition as well. And hydro, hydro request a common elements agreement. 
Okay, so all of those are okay. The, the noise agreement, um, we would like to use the report from before, and uh, but we're okay with putting the agreements on title. Is Ms. Wakula the, uh, the planner on this file? That is myself, Mr. Mr. Chair. Hamilton. Okay, so you, you've heard Ms. Hill? Regarding uh, using the previous report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't see an issue with that. The only concern that staff would have is that those reports have a validity period. Uh, I believe it's just over one year since the time that it was created. So it, it is likely that they would be able to use that report. It would just need to be updated. Okay. That can be done, Ms. Hill? That's great, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I just, just briefly... Uh, Go over your uh, go over the consent. Uh, yep. Okay, so these are the two buildings that have been built. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Um, this is the site plan that I showed you the last time that I was here. Uh -huh. um, so showing the two buildings side by side, driveway down the center. And next slide, please. Uh, the, the previous slide was a working drawing um, the, from the construction drawing set. So here I've just cleaned it up a bit and colored it so it's a little bit more clear. Um, the brown tone shows pavement, whereas the white tone shows pedestrian only walking space. And um, so next slide. What we are proposing now is a severance with a rectangular shaped piece of property in front and uh, flag shaped ownerships in the back. Okay. I think Ms. McLean had some questions regarding this. Ms. McLean. Okay. Um, so just leaving that plan up there, just a couple of questions. Would the joint use agreement cover the total um, the total land, or is there separate a separate agreement for for each long semi detached? So the the joint use and maintenance agreement would be all for all, so that it would cover off every eventuality. Like if you needed to repair an eave that perhaps was um, running along the side of part part two or unit one twelve and running into unit 114, that's that's a joint issue there. But also you might wanna put up your ladder, your extension ladder um, over, uh, you know, crossing the, the easement line in the center. If we make this a joint use and maintenance agreement that's complete with all of them together, it just simplifies things, I think. Okay, and then thank you for that. And then um, on your... Um uh, explanation beside the the, the uh, plan for 112 Sherbrooke, it says parts one and two together with an easement right rights over part three. And I was wondering whether that should say and part eight. You are right. It should say and part eight. Thank you. And then similarly for the next one, 114, it should say I know it sort of says um, for vehicular and pedestrian access to rear yard parking for all, but that's very vague. I just thought again, it should include part eight. That is you. That is correct. Thank you. And then re reverse it on the other two, yeah. add part three, I think, um, just, to, just to clarify. The other question I had is there's a, an easement for um, maintenance I think I read it in maintenance of the Southern facade. So for 116 Sherbrooke, it says together with an easement right away over part six for pedestrian access for maintenance of the Southern facade. Can you just explain that? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. So imagine you own unit 116, which is the purple area, and you've hired uh, somebody to repair the caulking or the siding on the southern facade of your building. Um, 
the the repairman would likely want to park on the street on Sherbrooke and then pass along the side yard, which would be part six, to get to the southern facade of unit 116, rather than carrying equipment all the way down the center driveway and looping around, you know, in a J pattern around to your side yard. So would that then not also apply to the other uh the other units, 112 and 114, for maintenance so on, of that facade or not? Uh, yes, it would apply on that side. However, on that side, if you back up one slide, please. Yes. So you'll see that the, the buildings aren't a mirror version of each other. They're a parallel version of each other. So on the left-hand side, the pedestrian entrances are on that side yard. This all has to do with the slope of the site. We would normally mirror them. In other scenarios, we have mirrored, mirrored them, but in this, in this scenario, because of the slope of the site, they're not mirrored, they're parallel buildings. And so because of the location of the, the um, access points on that northern side, if you go forward one slide again, part one, is an easement um, that's defined not just for repair, but for regular pedestrian access. Okay, so in part six isn't for pedestrian access? No, it's only for repair. There isn't actually a pathway along there. Okay, okay, thank you. And then I guess I would suggest that if, if um, the committee does approve it, that we, um, I look at adding a condition on the consent that the uh, approval of the minor variance apple, the accompanying minor variance applications, and also that the um, uh, previous applications that are under appeal would be withdrawn. So I would make those suggestions as possible conditions. Thank you. Are you amenable with those, uh, those suggested conditions, Ms. Hill? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. So we'll add those as two more conditions. At the total of, uh, what would that be? Eight conditions in total. After we've eliminated the, <coughs> the original number one with the existing dwelling removed, which is no longer valid. Um, any other questions and or comments from the panel? And you're going to, you're going to amend your uh, as per your discussion with Miss uh, Miss McChain, you're going to uh, you'll, you'll amend that. Yeah, yeah we will send an, an updated uh, colored diagram with the definition of parts amended as she has uh, recommended. And thank you very much for catching that. Just to keep our our files up to date. And mm -hmm. accurate. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So. Let's, Mr. M Ms. Mr. McLean. Yes, just hi. Yes, uh, Travis McLean here at address 24 York Street. I'm the owner of the property. I just had a quick question comment regarding the noise study or the noise requirement. Um, from my review of the city's report, it was just a requirement to add the notices on title. So right now we have two titles. We're going to be creating four titles. We have notices on title for the existing two. Um, so has that changed or so there was no requirement to resubmit the noise study. We've implemented all the provisions of the noise study. We understood that it was just a matter of uh, adding the, uh, you know, uh, adding the, the notices on the new titles. Has something changed to that effect? Ms. Or? Ms. Ms. Mc, Ms. Wakula, regarding Mr. McLean's question or Mr. Hamilton, sorry. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, the requirements for the notices on title come from the actual noise study. So we would need the updated noise study that is valid to today's date um, in order to have the authority for legal services to implement those notices on title and create the agreement. Mr. McLean, you heard uh, Mr. Hamilton? Um, okay, yes, thank you. All right, okay. With that, are we ready to uh, decide on this application for consent? All in favor of the amended consent application that's before us today? All right. Consent's approved, Ms. Hill. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you.
Second, folks. Mr. Chair, there was also a minor variance that accompanied that application. Oh, yes, that's right. Hmm. Yes, reduce lot widths. <clears throat> I missed the page. All in favor of uh, of the uh, of the variances that uh, were uh, requested. Reduce lot widths. I think pretty simple stuff. All right. Okay. Thank you, Miss McLean. My mistake. Both variances and consents are for the property are approved. Um, next application that's before us, items 12 and 13, 55 bracket 53 on bracket Poplar Street, consent application to subdivide the property to two separate parcels of land in order to establish separate ownerships for each half of the existing long semi-detached dwelling currently under construction. Um, and that's that's for that property and for 59 bracket 57 on bracket Poplar Street. Uh, second consent to subdivide the property into two separate parcels of land in order to establish separate ownerships for each half of the long semi detached building currently under construction. All right, and the agent for this for this uh, for these applications is, is it Mr. Bat. Is he there? And is the agent online? I see a name on my screen, but that's it. All right, well, what we'll do is we'll stand this application down and deal with the, uh, the next application on the agenda. And that would be item. And 14, which is 489 St. Patrick Street, uh, minor variances to permit a reduced lot width and lot area, reduced facade setback, reduced side and front yard setbacks, and reduced glazing. I can't hear anybody. I can't hear anyone. And we, we've lost the chair. Uh, we'll, we'll give him a few minutes to log back in. Okay.
I don't know what happened there. My my internet just went bye bye. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> All right, Miss Miss Smith, this uh, application fourteen forty nine St. Patrick Street. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Please proceed. Um, did we need to swear? Uh, oh yes. Well, we actually don't need to swear. We just need to do the oath. <laughs> I could ask you to do that. Only swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes. Okay. Please proceed. Okay. So, uh, Chair and committee members, we are here today to discuss a proposed addition at uh, 489 St. Patrick Street to create a three unit building. This will be the permanent home of the owners. You can see from the location plan that it's well located on the, uh, at the edge of the downtown core. It's with the 15 minute walking distance or 1200 meters of the market, Lido Street and shopping along Beachwood. There's also access to great recreational spaces at the back. And note the neighboring three unit buildings as well. We reached out to concerned uh, parties last June, such as Nancy miller Chenier of the Lower Town Community Association. And she was pleased that we planned to keep the, the existing building. Next slide, please. We also reached out to Adrian Van Wick at the City of Ottawa Heritage Planner and he was also happy that we were keeping the existing building. It's, it's quite interesting uh, what happened here. You can see by the aerial view in 1965, the, that pale blue dot is the property. And you can see that it, it was an extension of St. Andrew Street at that time. St. Patrick is, is the block below it. And before 1976, everything south of that property to Lilo Street was demolished. This is one of the few properties that's remaining. And I looked at the, um, the historic uh, um, fire insurance plans and this building was here in 1901. Next slide, please. The neighbors also reached out, the owners reached out to the neighbors at that same time with a letter that's back in June, um, talking about um, what they plan to do. Uh, the top, uh, slide top left hand corner shows the back of the building where the um, the addition would go and below that is I just turned around and shown shows a, a laneway uh, going to the property that um, is existing I'll discuss it on the survey plan um, and you can see parking all as well um, on that property on the neighboring property which that's parking for the um, buildings um, off of Fosse. So on the next slide over, you can see the De La Salle High School where, oh, sorry, on the next photo, um, the De La, De La Salle High School where the owners will send their son. There's a couple of uh, crosswalks that uh, will bring him across the street to go to the school. And the rest of the photos just show the density um, of the that small area. And I just would like to point out the building that I was uh, discussing uh, to the northeast, which is the townhouse, the the building in the bottom uh, the bottom middle uh, slide on the or photo on the right, and then um, on the photo to the left of that, you can see that it's uh, quite a dense situation with that building nearby. Next slide, please. So currently the two front um, units are rented and the owners will live at the back in this proposed addition. You can, um, so most of the um, variances are required in order to keep the existing building. You can see the setback here, it's uh, 1.8 meters on the west side, 1.2 is required. And there's also an easement uh, shared with the neighboring building to the west. On the right, the building is right up against the property line, but there is a, 7 point, a 0.79 uh, setback uh, towards the back of the building. 
Next slide, please. So this shows that uh, access towards the back, the neighboring, um, the building that I was discussing, the townhouses towards the, uh, the northeast, and, and also the, the high density um, around it. So it is possible to drive in from St. Patrick if you're coming from Beechwood. There is a bit of a laneway to the side of the building, but it's difficult to cross the meridian. So most uh, access will usually be from the back, from Bouillère at the back, uh, either down the lane or parking on, on the street at the back. It, there, they have a verbal agreement with that, that neighboring property, but since um, it's been on the in the photos from 1976, so they may be able to have some uh, legal easement if anybody wanted to challenge that. Well, we have this picture up, Ms. Smith, and I'm just looking at the, uh, the variances, A to F. Um, which ones reflect an existing condition? Oh, sorry, I don't have it in front of me. AF is the... Um, A to F is a, are the variances to permit or reduce lot width. That's an existing condition? Yes, the existing lot okay. width is existing. And the, and the lot area is existing condition as well? Yes, yes, they're existing. Uh, well. Reduced front facade setback to zero to zero meters. Is that a, an existing condition as well? Yes. Yes, it's, it's existing, yes. Yes, they're and, all existing. And, they, and the side yard, side yard setbacks, northerly side yard and uh, southerly side yard? Yes, they're all existing. So the new addition... Okay, and just a second here, and to permit a reduced front yard setback, of zero meters, where the bylaw states in part that the front yard setback must align with the average setback of buildings on abutting lot sets existing as well, the buildings in place. Yes. Okay, and permit reduced glazing, that's as a result of the new build, correct? And that's, no, not the new build, that's to preserve the historic character. Of the uh, okay, so that, that reflects what's the building that's there. Yeah, and definitely uh, the historic uh, planners, the history, the heritage okay. department would strongly yep. agree with that. <laughs> we okay. suggested adding, meeting the zoning, but uh, it would not be approved of actually if we met the zoning. Excellent. That, that clarifies it, to, clarifies it for us. Please proceed. Okay. So um, the tree report has been done and there's no significant trees on the properties at property and the owner will provide a soft last landscaping at the back, at the back of the property. Next slide, please. So we, uh, here we see the setbacks. So yeah, as just discussed, um, they're all there to meet the existing conditions and, and mainly to preserve the existing building as well. Next slide, please. Oh, so yeah, so that the zoning, um, um, yeah, it's R4UD. And so the, uh, we're the addition, um, this is our, our site plan showing the proposed addition. Uh, next slide, please. So the 3D model shows that we're preserving the existing building and um, I don't think that the addition at the back will be very noticeable and it, it complies with the, uh, the density that's nearby. Next slide, please. We can go quickly through the the uh, architectural drawings um, of the proposed plans and, and elevations. The addition is 29 by 22, and uh, I believe it meets the um, all the four tests. Um, yeah, and uh, desirable, and it meets the new official plan uh, very much so, with the 15 minute uh, walking distance to to neighborhood resources. Thank you. Okay. And the, uh, the department's in support of this application? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'm assuming the heritage people are happy as well. Okay. All right, any questions, comments from the members of the panel? Okay, and <clears throat> who else wishes to speak? To this application. I see a couple beside Ms. Smith. Uh, that's the owners. Ah, okay. You wish, to, you wish to make a comment or are you just watching? We're here to answer any questions you may have as well. Thank you. 
right. Yeah, the owners have owned this building since 2015. I, for, I forgot to mention that. Okay. And, uh, and they have good tenants right now. Okay. So what I'm, what I heard you confirm was that these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six variances essentially reflect, they reflect an exi existing condition on site. That's correct. Okay. All right. Mr. Wilder, you had questions, comments? <clears throat> uh, uh, to the owners and to uh, Ms. Smith, are you aware of the uh, comment that was received by um, an abutting property owner, um, Ron Henniger and Jeffrey Ethier? Um, I'm not sure if you had a chance to speak with them, but obviously they're strongly opposed to these variances. Um, they have concern with um, um, what the addition is going to be used for. Um, and that's what I'd like to know as well. Um, are you talking here, um, uh, they're concerned obviously about subsidized housing or being used as Airbnb. They're concerned about uh, the fact that there's minimal greenery and space for trees and landscaping. Um, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you can um, um, speak to that. And I guess uh, something else, I guess, that they're concerned about, which is something, as we mentioned earlier in this meeting, uh, we don't have uh, any um, direct involvement with, but that's the uh, concern with um, uh, impact to their foundation during construction. Um, water runoff, the uh, drainage and the like. So if you can answer those questions for me, please. Um, I'm not sure if the committee has passed on to you our emails that we responded um, to, to them. And um, it's definitely the owners will be building there. This is their dream home, their, their forever home. So there will not be any Airbnb or any uh, even subsidized housing. Uh, there is a one person there who is subsidized, but they will affirm to you that she's a good tenant and some people just are in unfortunate circumstances at the time. I see, all right. And um, uh, did you, in your communication with them, uh, discuss at all about the, um, so in terms of green space here, um, I'm just curious in terms of what type of landscaping and amenity area is there now? What's there, what will what, what what will there be in fact on this site in terms of amenity area? If we go back to one of my slides, I can show you pictures of the rear yard. Right now, there's nothing there. There's no trees. Um, there there could be one parking space, and um, I'm not sure. What, what should we go back? Should I show you the photo? Yeah. So, uh, go back. I think it's the probably the third or fourth slide. Hmm. If you could go further back, uh, yes, here. So it's very, it's a very nice spot back there. Actually, um, I think they would have parking for for one car, and uh, and the rest would be grass. And they plan on planting some trees. So you can see uh, below the, um, you can see the the building. And um, right now there is some gravel, but I think they would. Uh, They'll be building the addition and putting some um, some more green space back there. Yeah, so grass and uh, cedar hedges uh, and some trees. Uh, we have been planting trees at the property actually over the years. We have planted three um, in the front of uh, the the home. Um, so we're just going to be continuing with um, planting trees. And you'll be you'll be you'll be residing in this uh, dwelling then with the additional space that's being created. That's right. Yes. And and you'll just have at the, what, the moment just the one tenant. Is that what you have in there now, or that's what you plan on having? So we would have uh, the two tenants remain in the two units in the front, and right. moving in the uh, rear addition. In the third unit. In the third unit. All right. Thank you very much. That's all the questions I have. I Mr. Wilder. That, oh, sorry. Continue, Ms. Smith. Um, I believe that the neighbor is actually uh, a tenant and she is uh, not in the unit next door. She's one, one over. All right. Okay. And any, any construction issues, of course, uh, that's 
that's a that's an issue that or that's something that's going to be resolved between between property owners. Yes, yes of course. Um, with uh, with the help of the city, if necessary, if it's necessary to bring in an inspector. Yes. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments from the from the panel? Okay. Are we going to reserve on this or no? Okay. All in favor of granting? Oh. I should note Hydro Ottawa. I don't know if you're aware of their comments. Uh, prior to any work, contact Ontario One to arrange underground plant. Contact Ottawa Hydro for more information, reconditions, clearance, and electrical servicing. I think that's pretty standard stuff. And then uh, right away, people have said a private approach permit will be required. Yeah. Okay. All right. And there are no other no other conditions being asked for. All in favor of the application as that is before us today. All right, the application is approved. Good luck with your project. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Next application we'll deal with is item number 15. Um, 594 Queen Elizabeth Driveway. This is uh, this application was adjourned in September for uh, <clears throat> amendments to variances. Um, minor variances to permit a reduced easterly side yard setback, a reduced rear yard area, and a reduced rear yard setback. It is proposed to demolish the existing shed and breezeway located at the rear of the property construct a new one-story entranceway addition and an attached lane facing single car garage with a rooftop patio to be located on the northeast corner of the existing dwelling. And the, uh, the agent for this, this file is uh, Mr. Marinelli, is he there? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. No video today, Mr. Marinelli, just there, you go. Ah, there we go. All right, um, first we'll start with the oath. You solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes, I do. Right. Um, <clears throat> we note that there is an amendment to variant C and it now reads to permit a reduced rear yard area of 17.8 square meters or 4% of the lot. Whereas the bylaw states the minimum rear yard area shall be 25% of the lot area or 109.15 square meters. Correct, yeah. Okay, all right. Please, uh, please proceed with your, uh, with your uh, request. Mr. Marinelli, on behalf of the applicant. Um, so as previously stated, so the proposal uh, here shows it is um, what the owner intends to do is at the rear of the property is to remove the existing shed um, as well as the existing breezeway and propose a uh, attached uh, single garage and enclose the entranceway into the, uh, the, the detached dwelling at the rear of the property. The, the two photos uh, on the left uh, show the existing conditions along the rear, uh, which is the Sydney Cook Lane. Um, as you can see here on the, the lower uh, right-hand corner, um, you see the Sydney Cook Lane at the back and as the, the, the Queen Elizabeth driveway at the front of the property, you can see the, the laneway at the back, um, there's a lot of uh, current existing uh, garages. Um, it's just mainly used as a, as a kind of an access lane there. Um, can I have the, the next uh, slide, please? Um, so the, the application is requesting four minor variances, uh, two of them which include for a relief from the heritage overlay, which uh, basically is to reduce the easterly side yard setback of six meters, uh, whereas the heritage overlay uh, states that the side yard setback of an addition must be a minimum of 0.6 meters greater than that of the wall at the building closest to the side lot line. Um, as well as to permit the rear yard setback of 2.184 meters, whereas the heritage overlay provisions state that the rear yard setback must be a minimum of three meters at the back. 
The, the two other uh, minor variances, again, have to do, uh, do with the rear yard setback and the rear yard setback uh, areas, um, which one of them, as you stated, was amended to the 4% of the lot area, um, as well as uh, the, the minor variance D, which is the last one, is to permit a reduced yard setback of the 2.184 meters, whereas the zoning bylaw requires a minimum rear yard setback of 9.14 meters. Um, you can see here in the in the uh, proposal uh, site plan, the orange dashed lines are indicating where the existing uh, shed and the breezeway currently is. Um, the proposal of the uh, garage and the um, the enclosed entrance will actually uh, kind of will improve the existing conditions. Um, the because right currently the current shed is uh, quite closer to the interior side lot line on the east eastern side. Um, as well, the um, you can see back here, there is an existing uh, garage uh, on the property as well, which is a bit closer to the to the rear lot line. But again, the the proposal has that uh, garage set back in. So again, we feel that the um, the, uh, the the variances for the relief from the heritage overlay uh, and the relief from the setbacks, uh, the minimum lot width, the minimum lot area are minor. Um, the variance is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the property, as well as the neighboring properties have garages or carports adjoining the lane as seen in the earlier photos. Um, and the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw as a detached dwelling is still, is still maintained in this proposal. And uh, the general intent and purpose of the official plan as a general urban area is still maintained as well. That's... Mr. Wilden, you had... Uh... Questions, comments? Thank you, Chair. There, there was a photo uh, where you could see the hydro pole uh, near the shed that's to be removed. Could, could we put that one back up? Sure. So we have done, um, so there's the photo there. If we actually go, I believe it, there's another slide at the back. It just, because it's in the, uh, the proposal plans that do show that we have uh, set back the garage and the rooftop terrace there back within the, uh, the clearances required. That's a, that's a good uh, image, thank you. Uh, so um, Hydro says that there is the possibility of conflicts because there's a primary and secondary line there. And it looks pretty busy when you look at the photo in terms of what's going on there. Um, have they given you or have you talked to them about what types of clearances will be needed? We, we have, well, we, because we had, before we submitted the application, we did submit these plans to them for their review and comments. And they said that they had no uh, issues at the time. Um, and I think in one of their conditions, they, they say that uh, to proceed further, but put in the application and then they would come on site before any construction gets built because it's like, well, we, we are still meeting their, their uh, clearances from what you I- You are meeting their clearance now? Yes. yes. Do you know that? So yes. they, they've looked at the sway of the, of yep. the lines and, and they've indicated that what you're proposing does not interfere with the sway of Correct. the lines. Yep. And you have that from them somewhere? And, yep. and Correct. You do. Okay. Um, for the committee coordinator, I'd like to have that uh, placed on the record uh, uh, when we discuss this. Um, and the reason I say that is if it turns out it's not, uh, it's going to be important that, um, that the committee has had the discussion with you about that. Um, uh, so I'm uh, comfortable with what you've said to me based on that. The second question, uh, the, the laneway itself, is the city plowing that? Who does that? I, I, uh, my understanding is that they are, um, but again, I, can, I, I would need to just double check, but that was my understanding. Um, I can't recall. Is that, uh, is that Mr. Hamilton? There you are, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, do, you, do you have the answer to that question? Yes, do you, Mr. Chair, I do believe that the laneway is assumed by the city. Okay, must be a pretty small truck that goes down that, that little corridor for sure. Okay, uh, those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions from the uh, members of the panel? Okay. So we have one, two, three, four variances we'll deal with here you've mr wildman has has, uh, has covered off on the uh, on hydro 
Hydro's uh, concerns, comments. Um, you know, that right away people have indicated that you're going to need a private approach permit. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, there was one condition uh, to existing shed and breezeway demolished or relocated under authority of uh, of the city. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we can enforce that. Um, so quite frankly, I think we're going to uh, delete that condition. It's not necessary. It's going to come down anyway. Correct? Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. All right. Um, and there's just the, <clears throat> the one change on variant C, which we've already discussed to reduce the, to change the, uh, the, the square meters of the reduced yard area and the, and the lot and the coverage for the air, the area and the actual square meters, percentage area and square meters. Okay. So on the uh, on this application for for variance at five ninety four Queen Elizabeth Driveway, all in favor of the application as proposed. All right, your application is approved. Good luck with your project. Yeah, thank you. Keep Hydro happy. Yes, <laughs> will do. <laughs> all right. The next item on the agenda is item number 16, 333A and 333B, Athlone. This is a consent application to subdivide the property to two separate parcels of land to create separate ownership for the newly constructed semi-detached dwelling with one unit on each of the parcels. Um, this, was decide, this, this application was um, adjourned on the 8th of December, uh, at a request from us, uh, so the applicant to submit an updated 4R plan indicating the severance line through the semi detached dwelling. And I believe we have received that. So now that we are going to, now we'll hear the application. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Ami is, uh, is the owner, is he here? Yes. Ah, okay. Before we begin, the oath of declaration. You solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're aware of the conditions that the city is requesting independent services for both severed and retained parcels. Uh, an agreement regarding an active railway line. Yes, yes. And the yep. uh, and the joint use joint use and maintenance agreement as well. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything anything else we've uh, we've received? Like, so you provided us with the with the for our plan with the severance line. Anything else you'd like to add to this? Uh, well, just a simple consent. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Nothing to add. Any questions or comments from the members of the committee? in favor of this consent as provided with the, all right. Your consent is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Next application we'll deal with is item 17 on the agenda, 710. Rue de l'Eglise. This is minor variances to permit reduced front and rear yard setbacks, secondary dwelling unit entrances to be located below the ground floor, southern veranda on unit A to project closer to the front lot line to permit the front facing balconies to project beyond the face of the building, and the detached accessory structures to be located in the southerly and northerly side yards. It is proposed to construct a new two story semi detached dwelling which will contains secondary dwelling units. The existing dwelling and the three sheds will be demolished. <clears throat> this was, um, this is adjourned from, uh, from December the 8th. Um, there's an amendment to variance A, and it now reads to permit a reduced front yard setback of two meters, whereas the bylaw requires a minimum front yard setback of 4.5 meters, not 
And I believe we have also added a variance G, as in George, um, the reduced, reduced front yard area of 10.8% 10, 10, uh, area or 52.83 square meters, whereas the bylaw requires a 25% lot area or 137.7 square meters. So that's been, uh, that's been added to the, uh, to the list of uh, list of variances requested. The agent for this application is Mr. Hamel. Is he there? Mr. Hamel, your address for the uh, record, please. Um, my address is 170 Main Street, Ottawa. Okay. All right. Please proceed with your application, Mr. Hamel, and remember we're on a five minute timeline. Uh, Mr. Chair, we will be Oh to yes, we have to do the solemn oath and declaration. Thank you. I have to take a 30, I have to eat 30 seconds of that. <laughs> do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do. Okay. Um, Please proceed, Mr. Hamel. Panel members, thank you. Um, uh, Rachel in my office here as a co-op student from uh, uh, Carleton will um, uh, take it from here. Thank you. Hello, my name's Rachel. Um, if you could go to the third PDF, page A1, I can, I can start. Uh, so the proposal is to build a two-story, sorry. sorry, yeah. This one, okay. Yeah, the proposal is to build a two-story semi-detached dwelling with two SDUs on a lot that would permit a low-rise apartment building. However, the existing lot is far broader than it is deep. Therefore, this lot's orientation to the street greatly impacts the required front yard and rear yard setbacks, whereas the bylaw generally recognizes setbacks on sites that are less wide than deep. Therefore, the following minor variances are triggered. To provide a re uh, reduced front yard setback of two meters, whereas the bylaw requires 3.19 meter setback averaging the adjacent neighbor's front yards. Uh, to provide a reduced rear yard setback of 1.2 meters, whereas the bylaw requires 2.8 meters. Um, to provide a reduced rear yard area of 10.8%, whereas the bylaw requires 25% of the lot area. Um, the fourth one is to allow the uh, south uh, front verandas to project 1.2 meters and uh, be 0 0.9 meters away from the front lot line, whereas the bylaw requires maximum projection of two meters, but no closer than one meter to any lot line. To allow the second floor front uh, facing balconies to project 1.2 meters beyond the front face of the wall, whereas the bylaw states that a lot with a depth of 23.5 meters or less permits a maximum projection of zero meters above the first floor. Uh, sixth variance is to allow the doorways uh, entrances to the secondary dwelling units to be below the ground floor, whereas the bylaw states the doorway entrance that leads to the secondary dwelling unit is limited to the ground floor only. And the seventh variance is to allow for the required garbage storage areas as an accessory building uh, to be uh, partly located in the side yard, whereas the bylaw requires they be located entirely in the rear yard. Uh, the four test, um, the two-story semi-detached dwelling unit meets the intent of the official plan as it enhances the character of the general urban area while keeping with the overall residential low profile neighboring streetscape. Two, the intent of the zoning bylaw is met as a semi detached is permitted in R4 UA zone. The variances requested are minor for the following reasons. The front facade was set at an average of the abutting south neighbor setback and the north neighbor building across Rula Point um, in order to create a consistent streetscape along Rue de l'Eglise. Yeah, that'll be on page uh, four. Let's see, figure one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the proposed rear yard um, is close to half the required setback. Um, is the 
and is equivalent to the existing rear yard and is contextually appropriate with other lots facing Rideau Legalese. The proposal is set at a typical interior side yard setback, treating it as if the corner, if it were a corner lot facing Rilla Point. This results in a more compact uh, building form and occupies less building footprint than permitted by the zoning bylaw. That is on uh, page five, you can see that. Um, the proposal rear yard area of 10.8% is appropriate because the difference of 14.2% from the required 25% is more than made up in the side yards that are 25.1% of the total lot area. The verandas and balconies are very minimal in the projection and only trigger the variance due to the very sh shallow lot depth. The entrance to the secondary dwelling units from the depressed terrace allows for the occupants to access their units privately while reducing the square footage of the principal building and overall building mass. The depressed terraces also provide private outdoor amenity areas for the occupants along, the, along with the higher quality of natural light in the SDUs. Finally, a functionally sized garbage storage accessory building set at a minimum 0.6 meters proximity to the rear yard property line is not able to be entirely located within the rear yard. And for the proposal is appropriate and desirable as the very no on the neighborhood. Um, to the existing building's rear yard non-compliance maintain the average front yard setback of the two neighboring buildings. Furthermore, uh, its form and height are compatible with neighboring single semi-detached buildings and proposed uh, buildings. Impact is less than permitted as a right, low-rise apartment building form area and total permitted. So, um, can't hear you very well. Sorry. Um, um, thanks, Rachel. Perhaps we could go to uh, package 3A1. Sorry, um, could we go to package three, sheet A1? Thank you. This uh, committee members is the site plan. Um, the two accessory buildings that are on either left and right are the uh, garbage storage areas that we're talking about because of the rear uh, setback, which is very, uh, shallow part of those units are in the rear yard, but the, the other parts of them are in technically the side yard. That's why that variance is being being requested. The rear yard uh, is uh, commensurate; it's equal to the existing building's rear yard, but is of course extended towards the south or to the left. Um, <clears throat> I think um, the drawing that you saw earlier, we, ha we had shown on page uh, four of the previous package or pink strip, that's actually the true average of the built front yard setbacks uh, on these very wide but shallow lots along the Ligdes, and we are completely in keeping with them. Um, however, the calculation of the abutting lot, which is used to be a street is now a lot, so we have to use the 4.5 meter setback um, to average the uh, required side uh, front yard setback. In a nutshell, I guess if we move ahead uh, uh, to the next slide, that is the elevation of the building that we're we're proposing. It's a semi-detached building, uh, one side of which will be um, occupied by the owner. Each of those units have um, a secondary dwelling unit that are accessed from a terrace, which uh, goes into the ground on the ends of each of the buildings. 
if we go to the next sheet, you can see the narrow depth of each of the buildings. These are the elevations, the side elevations effectively. And um, there is a porch uh, uh, to access the parking area for the main unit um, on the side and then a deck above. Below the front, the side porch, I guess, um, where the pedestrian on the right is looking, uh, there are steps that go into uh, that go down to the basement level, uh, which permits us to have large windows there and a private entrance for the secondary dwelling units on each side of the building. There is the uh, garage or the uh, garbage and recycling shed that you can see <clears throat> towards the middle of the of each of the elevations. It's been designed as well uh, to be. Uh, in keeping with the style of the building. The next uh, sheet is the back elevation, and I'll just spend a little bit of time here. I don't know how much time I have left here, but um, <clears throat> the windows that we see on the second story, uh, starting from the outside, is the bedroom. And then I believe uh, there is a staircase. So there are three windows there, a tall vertical one and two, a horizontal one and a square one. Those, those follow the staircase up. And then the two windows uh, side by side in the middle there, I believe also are uh, for a bedroom or a washroom rather and uh, a closet. On the ground floor, the vertical uh, window is, is still the staircase, the one in the most uh, extreme widths, the other square windows, I believe that's the kitchen. And then the ones in the middle um, are uh, the living dining area. The next slide, please. These, the, the next perspectives here are perspective drawings. They are of the scaled uh, building but in perspective, and of course, as we know in perspective, nothing is scalable. There's no true scale to these buildings, but they are uh, modeled from a scale site. And the next shows a bird's eye view of the building with the abutting neighbors uh, to their rear. So we see the rear elevation there with the decks and uh, Verandas on the sides uh, in the left hand picture and the top view shows a simplification of the building uh, casting a shadow uh, at about, I would say, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Mr. Hamill, while, Mr. Hamill, while you have this, uh, this, this graphic up um, and the picture on the right, what's yep. the uh, what's the approximate horizontal separation distance between the back of what you're proposing and the houses directly behind? Um, if we go to the plan, they are not indicated, but um, Geo, I guess we could find out from Geo Ottawa, um, the closest point of the middle building, I guess. I know that there are some comments that have been written in. Um, it is what it is. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I would say it's in the order of 20 to 25 feet at the closest point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Please proceed. The next, uh, the next, uh, uh, oh yeah, since we're on here, the top view does not show the abutting um, accessory buildings for the rear yards because we felt that we wanted to show uh, for descriptive purposes, what we're, our proposal is. If we had shown the two or three garages and a variety of sheds that are abutting the rear property line uh, to our property lines, we wouldn't be seeing much of our building. And the final slide, the next slide here, um, shows a diagram of the section of the building I'll just take you through it very quickly. The red, so we're showing the three levels, the basement floors, main floor and second floor. Um, the yellow portion is our built uh, walls and floors. Um, and the red line above the basement floor is the average grade. So we are looking at a building that is uh, just over two stories high. 
and the 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 second top horizontal red line is the permitted height for a semi-detached building in the R4 UD zone. We've shown the extent of the width of what this building could be if it were to meet and, and still meet the, the uh, zoning requirements for a low rise apartment building form. And if you add a foot to the width on each side of that envelope, which is hatched in diagonal lines, that would and uh, cap it at the, the height of the semi that is permitted, that would be the envelope that would permit us to build a semi-detached house uh, and meet the, the side yard. We could meet the side rear and front yards with a building that would be that wide, in fact, two, two feet wider than what we're showing here because the envelope that we're showing here is actually for what is permitted on this property, which is a, which is a low rise apartment building form of eight units, which would be, could be three stories high. So the, the impact of meeting the bylaw for even a semi-detached we felt was, would be more impacting than increasing the depth of the building uh, and reducing its width uh, for a semi that would still be meaningful and viable for this project. If we go back to um, the site plan, I believe on A1, it's a little clearer where the setbacks are that are permitted for a semi-detached building. Sorry, A1 on the same package, that site plan there, the green colored one. Um, we've clearly identified the, the orange line <clears throat> that goes into the, over the two uh, driveways and that is set back at the required setbacks for the, the rear yard and the front. So that's what could be permitted as of right. Our decision was, a, was an important one to instead increase the depth of the building, so encroach into the rear yard, um, to the same setback as the existing building, and then move it towards the front yard, uh, which would be more in keeping with the abutting neighbors built with the built abutting neighbors front yards um, to reduce the impact and to increase the green space and the open space on the property. That was our rationale for developing this type of concept rather than meeting the bylaw on all points, which we could do, but again, felt that the impact would be less. So we were particularly mindful of the impact test of number four. I also wanna maybe, just stop there. I, I think uh, I, I can answer any questions, especially with respect to uh, the letter that was sent in by Mr. Major. Um, I can also say though, that we have reached out to the community association who are very supportive of this. They acknowledge, they acknowledge the decrease in the rear yard, required rear yard and front yard and applauded the approach that we took. I, I, we also spoke to the councillor who is also extremely supportive of this form and in fact, it's look to. And um, I understand from Ked that they have no, no concerns with this, uh, with this proposal and that it meets um, the intensification policies and the intent of the bylaw. But I, I, can, I can stop there. I know Mr. Major has written in and um, Anyways, I'm open to questions. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamel. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wildman, you had a question or comment. Yeah, the um, if we could put the, I think it was the last plan that was up that showed the um, the setbacks permitted under the bylaw for a moment. Yeah, so the, the orange line, it's a little difficult to see, but it's the orange line, I gather. And um, in when you were, I just want to be clear on this, when you were at that uh, sort of stretched limit on either end, how much higher can you go when you do that? How much higher would you be in feet? 
on, on this site plan, we are showing the setback requirements uh, for a semi-detached. A semi-detached can go up to 10.7 meters or 10 meters, I can't remember, but I know in our section, we are 0.3 meters shy of the permitted height. Okay, and an apartment? Could go up to 11 meters. And so, uh, and is, so is the orange uh, line still applicable to an apartment as well? The orange line for the apartment is included on um, the... If you go to the, the first package... Um, figure one? Page... The last page, sorry. Page, what page is it? Page eight. Page eight shows the white area as being the area that is permitted to be built as a low rise apartment building form. The big difference is that from a semi to a low rise, the side yards increase by uh, 0.3 meters from 1.2 for a semi to 1.5 meters for a low rise apartment building form. This so diagram shows that for the low rise apartment building for. Okay, so for the low rise apartment, you could occupy that white area and you could be about a meter higher. That's correct. Okay. And that's okay. shown also in that section drawing, yeah. Okay, um, I, I can't recall the planner on the file for the city. Um, if I could have the planner here for one second. Certainly. That's myself. Uh, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, yes, just uh, we, we just had a discussion on, on uh, footprint for, for an apartment. Are you in agreement with that? Sorry, with respect so to we, which? We, uh, with respect to the footprint that was shown on that plan, is that your understanding that that footprint for an apartment uh, would, would occupy that area that was shown in the white, give or take, and that it would be up to a meter higher than what is being proposed? Correct. I can confirm that the height permitted for apartments is higher, so they would be able to go about 1.3 meters higher than what they're currently proposing. The setbacks for low-rise apartments will be increased uh, to 1.5 meters, I believe, so it will be a little bit shorter than what uh, be shown on the orange hatched right. line here. Um, so generally, yes. So you're about four feet higher and quite a bit longer potentially um, on either end of it if, if uh, they chose to max out for an apartment. Correct. The only difference is for an apartment, there will be amenity area requirements. So they may need to shorten the floor plate of the building to accommodate that on site as well. Fair enough. And could that, uh, could the amenity area in this area be on the roof? Um, I, I'm not sure that I would be able to answer that question for you right now. I think we would require some of it at grade as well. Okay. Fair enough. Those are my yeah. questions, Mr. Chair. Thank uh, you. But a, roof, a rooftop patio, Mr. Hamilton, is, is a permitted projection in this zone. They are permitted. It wouldn't be considered as a projection. There are requirements for the terrace to be set back from the exterior walls, depending on the height of the terrace. So it might be challenging with a floor plate this narrow. Yeah. Okay. Great. Can I respond, Mr. Chair? Hang on one second. Mr. Wildman, anything further? And no, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay. Mr. Hamel, go ahead. Uh, just to clarify, I think with the amenity space requirement for a low rise apartment building form, we would be meeting the full 25% of the lot, rear, rear yard lot area in the diagram that we've shown. I'm pretty sure we could more than uh, meet it there. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to uh, clarify as well, uh, with a low rise apartment building form for anybody who's interested in this zone, we would be permitted up to eight units. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Hamel. Mr. Wilder, you had a comment, question? Mr. Hamel, um, did you have any contact with Mr. Major at 709 Morgan Street? Thank you, Thank you uh, for that comment. I, um, our, uh, the owner was asked, and I think uh, made many efforts to contact a number of people around the property. As you'll notice in, in, in the file, there are a number of letters of support. 
uh, we were able to contact the abutting neighbor uh, to the uh, south who initially had uh, concerns and needed clarification. He is uh, on board now. And I understand that Mr. Um, uh, the, Flebet, our, our, the owner did reach out to the uh, abutting properties on his rear yard and did talk to somebody uh, at Mr. Major's address, but um, had a hard time. I, I'm not sure if it was Mr. Major or the tenant, um, but they, they had a hard time uh, communicating. I think uh, English was not that tenant's first language. So, so I know that was made. His, um, his property is obviously of the ones at the rear, his property uh, is probably uh, um, the, at the closest point to the rear yard, right? I mean, his, uh, his I guess he's got a garage, he's got a shed at the back of his property to the rear of, of what you're developing here. I mean, I, I guess it's a shed, he's got a fence separating what your property, your client's property from his property at the moment. That's, that's correct. Um, there, his property is um, the second from the north abutting the rear uh, uh, lot line. Right. You're on right. his property, there's a, a garage and on our A1 site plan, we're showing two sheds, uh, which I think were located uh, based on the survey that we have as much as we could. Right, I'm just looking there. I'm just looking at his, I guess that's his shed that would be at the back, that would be uh, that would be his property at 709 Morgan, just behind unit B, I guess, right? And um, um, I guess his concerns now, I don't see where it's a concern. He talks about um, snow accumulating against the fence, garage and shed, but really that's not gonna be an issue from what I can tell. Um, there's not gonna be any uh, snow, I mean, at the rear of unit B, any snow that falls and the, and the inclement weather in terms of removing it and all, that's not, it's not an impact. It's nowhere near where the uh, driveways are, right? So that's not gonna be impacted in any way, as he points out. I think he's incorrect in saying that that's gonna be an issue. Um, and drainage, I guess we don't deal with drainage that'll be dealt with obviously uh, uh, during the um, permit process. Um, so am I correct that the, uh, snow is not an issue at all in terms of uh, the rear of Unit B? Yeah, um, Mr. Mel. thank you. I, I think other than what just falls naturally, it's a flat roof, there won't be any additional um, uh, snow falling off the roof, for example. So I would agree with you um, that, uh, Mr. Wilder, that other than just a standard accumulation of snow, uh, would uh, would not be greater than any other side yard, and the two right. driveways are not even close to his property. Right, and I guess uh, his fence is not going to be. I mean, that his fence is going to remain. It's uh, obviously um, not going to be impacted by your project. I guess correct. So uh, we are maintaining a four foot uh, setback there, which should be sufficient for uh, excavation and uh, foundation work as well. It's very okay. for an interior. Well, that was document. my that was my next question. So for excavation, so your separation there is basically four feet. Interesting. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Anything further, Mr. Wilder? No. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Hamel. Uh, we also have I think several neighbors who uh, would like to speak to this application. Uh, Michelle Major at 709 Morgan Street. Ms. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I can hardly hear you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm uh, elderly a little bit, but uh, I will get, I will let my uh, Rhonda Moore speak for me. Okay. Okay. Hello, can you hear? Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Rhonda Moore. I live at 709 Morgan Street. Okay. Um, I would like to point out a few things. Uh, first of all, this lot is 10.94 meters wide by approximately 161 feet. 
our sketch is up, okay? And this uh, shows the garage and the shed that's not shown on their perspective drawings. You can see how very little bit of space that there is there. This building is 108 feet long, including the side porches. There's no development like that on the street or anywhere else in this neighborhood that's 108 feet wide on a lot that's only 10.94 meters wide. The setback, the front yard setback is 4.5 meters and the backyard is 25% of the depth, which is only 10.9 meters. So the total setbacks are uh, 11 point, sorry, 7.33 meters. That leaves 3.61 to build something on. An apartment building couldn't be built on that. The existing structure is only about a third of the size of this. And it's, it's approximately back 3.5 feet. If this building is built, Mr. Major will be sitting on his back porch and it'll only be 20 feet away from him. There won't be any sunshine at all in the backyard. I don't see how a reduction of this much can be considered a minor variance. Another structure could be built there that would accommodate four units and add rental units to the city. This is a 108 foot long monstrosity that's gonna be 26 foot high and standing above Mr. Majora's property. Half of, his, half of his house is a one story. The other half is two story. No. Even in an R5 zone, you don't permit a, a backyard setback that small. Okay. Anything else, ma'am? I just want to point out that the uh, perspective drawings that were included from the developer did not show some of the structures that are actually there and how crowded and cramped it's really going to be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, that uh, they never contacted me. I'm here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So he contacted me Monday morning at 11.32 in the morning to try to make friends with me. He said, I want to be your friend. You don't like my project and this. And, and he, start, he started. I just told him, sorry, I'm not here to argue. I just don't like the project. You're going to infringe my, the way of my living and all that. So I said to him, thank you for calling and we'll let the city decide. So really, gentlemen, this is affecting us. It's affecting our neighbors. And also when the gentleman, Mr. Amel, I believe, mentioned that they contacted the one uh, owner on the north side of me is because they don't speak English, they speak Spanish, and they couldn't understand what they were talking about. And it's mis and the owner contacted them, and they told me they didn't know what they were talking about. So I'm very sorry to tell Mr. Amel that they didn't get any recommendation from nobody. I am sure they didn't do that. Also, the, 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 the owner on my other side from going south, to my house mm -hmm. is also against the project. And they never contacted them also. So nobody knew what was going on until we got the news from you, your committee, Mr. President. So well, I'm very sorry to say, but they didn't make any effort to contact me. So thank you for giving me the opportunity yeah. to explain. And just, uh, and, and just to let you know, there's no, there's no legislative requirement for uh, for an applicant to actually get in touch with his or her neighbors on on matters like this, it's uh, it, when they do, it's it's because they're it's a courtesy. We prefer if we prefer it a different setup, but uh, that's what's in place right now. There is no requirement, and the notice you got from us was well ten days before this hearing. So and that that is legislated. Okay, um, thank you very much, Mr. Major, and. Uh, for your uh, for your input, um, we also had uh, 
Mr. Boursier from, on, uh, on Rue de l'Église, is, uh, is he going to speak or is he not speaking today? He's not in attendance, Mr. Pardon Chair. Me? He's oh. not online, Mr. Chair. He's not online? No. Okay. All right. Are there any, any questions for the, uh, the neighbors or for the applicant regarding this, uh, regarding this proposal from the members of the committee? I think what we'll do, Mr. Hamel and uh, Mr. Major, is we're going to reserve um, our decision. We'll uh, discuss this amongst ourselves after the after the hearing uh, concludes, and you'll receive uh, you'll receive a notice of our decision uh, within ten days. Mr. Ma Mr. Mr. Hamel, all right, uh, um, Mr. Chair, do we still have a chance to comment on the letters uh, that were? and the comments from the neighbors or are I, you no i think I, I think we've we've that's fine mr Hamel. we're good thank you very much so you'll hear from us within 10 days thank you very much everybody the next application You'll hear today is number 18 on the agenda, 550 Mansfield Avenue. And this is a, uh, this is a request to demolish an existing dwelling and construct a two-story detached dwelling with an attached garage as shown on plans filed with the committee. And so um, we have a minor variance request from the zoning bylaw to permit a front facing attached garage, whereas the bylaw does not permit a front facing attached garage as it does not reflect the dominant character as determined by the streetscape character analysis. Um, since the adjournment um, in, uh, in December, um, Regarding revisions, excuse me, <clears throat> um, we have a revised site plan, which we reviewed with new setbacks from the property line. Um, this was apparently moved back and make it smaller. The new setback from the property line is now 17.04 feet or 5.19 meters. <clears throat> so the applicant's uh, agent on this, Oh, it's the owner. It's the owner, Mr. Mr. Gammon. Is he there? Hi, hi. Thanks very much to the uh, okay. committee for before we start. Before yeah. we start, you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing, and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes. Yeah. Um, please, please, please proceed, Mr. Gannon. Well, I'll, I'll address uh, the committee uh, just with the four tests of the minor variance. Um, um, the number one, uh, we hope that we've been able to demonstrate that the variance that we're requesting is minor. Um, when we included the block north and the block south on Mansfield, which is kind of uh, on either side of the subject section, the dominant feature of the streetscape analysis is a front-facing attached garage as opposed to a detached garage. So it's, it's just on the section of street that we're on that has a, a, bit, of, a bit of an older style of garage. Um, number two, the, the variance we're requesting is desirable for the appropriate development uh, or use of the property. It's a larger property uh, in that it's uh, one and a half lots. And I, I think my understanding is that the concern about front facing garages is, is largely aesthetic. It's the appearance of the house and kind of in the 80s, 90s, um, a dominant feature of having a, a very kind of dominant garage facade. And uh, I guess I would just draw attention to the, the house plans that really feature, you know, uh, the minority of the facade of the house is garage. You know, it's got a wraparound front porch, it's got front facing windows. Um, and so it, uh, it will have a very proportional and traditional look. 
Um, we've also contacted many neighbors. So kind of particularly before this latest outbreak, we were able to engage uh, all the neighbors in the area. And we uh, spoke with 13 sets of neighbors who, whose names uh, and addresses are appended. And they were supportive of our application for having an attached garage. Um, they were happy with the design. And uh, one of the, insert, the assertions that uh, uh, Mr. Hamilton had, had made would be that uh, having a front facing garage here would be an undesirable um, feature. But I would say that is in contradistinction to um, the opinion of these neighbors, you know, 13 pairs, 26 neighbors total, who were not only supportive of our application, but also would like the opportunity, should they ever renovate or build, to, to have that as a, uh, a right to be able to have a, an attached garage. Um, the uh, number three, the general intent of the, the zoning bylaw is maintained. Um, our proposal really meets all of the zoning bylaws with the exception of the streetscape analysis and the attached garage. Um, and we believe it to be minor in nature, um, thus uh, meeting the general intent and purpose of the bylaw. And, uh, and then number four, the general intent and purpose of the official plan is, uh, is maintained. So it's our understanding with the new official plan um, that the, there's a stronger policies around tree preservation. And uh, in our, our proposal, we're maintaining 10 of uh, 15 trees on the property. Uh, there was obviously concern about the two mature oak trees at the front of the property. We've never had any intention to, to remove those. Um, and then we've re recently with this uh, resubmission, we've redesigned the home and the setbacks of the home to uh, the satisfaction of the infill forester, Nancy Young, to make sure that the, the home is uh, giving appropriate space for the, the two character mature oaks. Um, there's, you know, uh, there's a birch that will have to be removed. The birch we would kind of just point out is, is old and will probably have to be taken down anyway. There's large branches falling off it. It's rotten on the inside. Um, and then there's a, a crab apple tree and, and three small lilac trees that would have to be removed. And we would certainly uh, welcome and provide a, a new uh, landscaping um, plan with new uh, trees to replace the ones that are lost. Um, the uh, with respect to the uh, the garage, you know, having the alternative is obviously a detached garage at the rear of the property. Um, but if we do that, then the, we would lose a magnolia tree, which is a beautiful tree, uh, which we don't want to do. And we would have a much longer driveway, much more impermeable surface would be which would also be a bit contradictory to the official plan uh, in that it is looking for more permeable surface and and more uh, more green space and retained trees. Um, so we feel, we feel and hope that you appreciate that we're um, um, working with the city and, and trying to make a home that we can live in for the next 45 years that kind of fits in with the uh, streetscape. Thank you for your, uh, your presentation. Um, we adjourned this back last year. Uh, to give the uh, planning department the opportunity to review this application under both the old official plan and the new official plan. I think Mr. Hamilton was the planner on this. Mr. Hamilton, what, was your, what were your findings just looking at reviewing this under both OPs? Thank you, Mr. Chair, that's much appreciated. Uh, the staff concerns still remain. Um, the majority of our concerns relate to uh, compliance with the zoning bylaw and the intent of the zoning bylaw and its purpose in um, ensuring that the dominant characteristics of the street remain with new development. Uh, the new official plan has stronger policies relating to creating development that does not include parking elements like the garage um, that is proposed. Uh, they're largely discouraged and where permitted are intended to be um, pushed towards the rear or the interior of the site and, and not form a large part of the building facade. So our, our concerns do remain and we are not in support of the streetscape variants. I guess I was just kind of, I don't know how the, you had a previous, uh, you know, physician that drew attention to the fact that they have kind of on-call duties and, and uh, you know, not that uh, I put this formally in the submission, but I also am an orthopedic trauma surgeon at the Civic. And so I do have to have 
some kind of covered parking and I live within five minutes of the Civic and be able to respond to emergency. So I do need uh, uh, a garage and a covered garage and ideally it would be attached. Um, I don't know what waiting kind of the committee places on that, if any, but we also, I put in our letter that we have disabled persons in our household too, and having an attached garage would certainly make the home accessible for a, a, a lifetime for us um, so that we can age in place, which is kind of a priority of, you know, Ontario health and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the health planning, you know, uh, on the provincial side, which is geared more towards home care long term and trying to keep people out of hospital and, you know, having an attached garage would certainly enhance the accessibility of the property. Okay. Right. Understood, Mr. Graham. And Mr. Wilder, you had a comment, question? Sorry. Uh, first of all, what is the, uh, what is the width of that, um, of that driveway, that garage. I see you've got two bays or essentially two garage doors, I guess, right? For two, uh, two vehicles, is that right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's six meters. Um, it, as I understand it, the, because of the, the width of the lot, it's an exceptionally wide lot. Um, that's actually not, it, that piece of it is allowed. Uh, it's more the fact that uh, it uh, would be the, the the issue is attached versus detached, not not uh, driveway width. Right, right. All right. The other question is, I guess, um, in terms of um, if one was to uh, look at the site plan, is there any way to fully protect? You know what we call. I mean, I guess maybe is uh, the, is our forester there? I just have a question for her. Um, so that's, is she there? Um, Maybe she's not yes, there. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so I, I've seen, I guess, how you've tried to resolve the matter of the trees on the property. Um, is it in, in actual fact the case that if the garage was put at the rear of the property, like I'm trying to figure out how this is gonna impact the trees, this magnolia tree, which I know is a very unusual tree to find and it's a beautiful tree, would in fact that be impacted if in fact, um, the uh, garage was uh, put at the rear. Um, would you know that? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I am just trying to open it up to see where that tree is. Um, it's taken a little while to load here. Um, That's quite a unique yes. tree, obviously. So. so it does look like it would likely be impacted it is a small tree so it's not uh it's oh, not it's protected a... under the bylaw so it's, oh, it's not a... okay. um but it is still a an interesting or significant tree um right so the taller trees trees tree a and b uh we refer to are those uh, significant trees um yes yep. those are very significant trees those a and are... b Right. And, and those are the ones we're protecting, you know, and making every effort to protect tree A and B, which are the mature red oaks. Mature red oaks. All right. So uh, you're, you're actually satisfied then with the, um, with the compromise in terms of um, the tree protection. Um, I guess you've had discussions with the owner and um, the city is satisfied now then with the, um, proposal what's being proposed in terms of the tree protection i uh, i do still have some concerns to be honest um, can, you, this, can you explain those please yes so the changes made um are very much appreciated and they do meet the absolute minimum uh best management practice for setback so that's understood to be three times the diameter of the tree mm -hmm. so this would be just over three meters from the trunk um, that's where the excavation would be for the, uh, the front of the house. And, um, they have cantilevered or they've proposed to cantilever a section of that. So that's how they're getting a little further away from the trunk, but it is the bare minimum. So it seems 
to me like there would still be option to be further away, which would be better for the tree, but it would take some redesign, which would be difficult and costly. So. All right. Thank you. I, I realize I, I realize the dilemma, but uh, thank you for that. And we have someone else with a hand up and who are you? We're, we're, we're also, I mean, one of the things that was mentioned was placing security on the securities on the trees. And we're certainly happy to, to uh, go along with that. You know, uh, we're, we're, hopeful and confident that the trees would be uh, protected and maintained. There's a large front yard in front of the tree uh, that won't be impacted. Okay, um, anyone else wish to speak to this application? Yes, sir, you are? Kent? Uh, you're, you're muted, Gordon. Sorry about that. My name is Gord Wyman. I'm the designer here as well as I'll be the builder for the home as well. So uh, we did meet with um, the forestry people on site. We will be hydro backing around those tree roots as well to do whatever we can to maintain those uh, trees. It is fully our intention to maintain those trees and do whatever it costs to, to uh, uh, make sure our excavation does not impede into the root system of those trees. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wyma. Any questions, comments from the, from the panel regarding this application? Could be reserved to discuss this further? I think so. All right, okay, thank you all for your, uh, for your input. Um, I'm glad to see there's been some movement on, on saving some mature green space. Uh, what we will do is uh, we will discuss, discuss this after, uh, after this part of the hearing concludes and you'll receive our, uh, our decision in 10 days. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next application I'll deal with is item number, item numbers 12 and 13. Uh, 55 and 53 Poplar Street. And these are two and 59 and 57 Poplar Street. These are two consents. Subdivide the properties into two separate parcels of land in order to establish separate ownerships for each half of existing long semi-detached dwellings <coughs> that are built on each of these lots. They're currently under construction. Um, Agent for this is Mr. Bat. Is he there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, and your address for the record, please, sir. Is 123 Armstrong Street. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> there have been some, um, some revisions. Um, the zoning description needs to be amended to read R4U, B as in Bob. It was a mistakenly. Uh, uh, put in as R4H, um, also part four. And this is for uh, the 55-53 Poplar Street application. Part four should not be included within, within this paragraph, as it says here, as it is part of unit 55 and the easement is to benefit unit 57 to 59 Poplar. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's also it's proposed to provide right away for pedestrian vehicular access and parking over parts seven, eight, and nine for the benefit of parts one, two, three, four, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Is that correct? You should take the four out of there. Take the four out. Okay. Yes. So parts one, two, three, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. That's Same. an amendment. Um, your private approach permit has been authorized. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, we do require. Oh, yes. I forgot. I forgot. Thank Sorry. you. A solemn oath. Mm -hmm. I've, done, I've done this a few times today. Uh, bad memory. Anyway, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do. 
All right, if you'd like to proceed uh, with your uh, with your request, um, we'd like to hear some explanation of how the strata plan is going to work, uh, especially in regards to encroachments. Um, I think I'd like to hear all, all the parts explained as well. Sure. Um, and there are a number of conditions. Uh, I'll just go over them right now. Cash and loop, party wall, certification, architectural drawings comply with the Ontario Building Code, independent services are both seven and retained lots. Uh, there's an agreement that's necessary for, because of an act, a nearby active railway line, a joint use and maintenance agreement as well. Um, and, and there's also a tree planting plan required. Yeah, we have all those taken care of. All right. Okay, please proceed, Mr. Babb. Okay, uh, if you'd like to just put up the first diagram that I sent for the PDF. Great, okay. So the plan on the left, um, I've done sort of just a color coding. So if you look at, uh, it just outlines uh, the various com component parts of the four addresses. 53 poplar noted in sort of a light violet color, parts five, six, seven, eight, and 14. 55 poplar, bottom right, light yellow. Uh, it is part four and part nine. 57 poplar, parts two, three, 10, 11, and 13 in the upper left is in orange and 59 poplar, just parts one and 12 uh, in the green color. Okay. The next drawing, so, sorry, go ahead. No, continue. Oh, go ahead, all right. Uh, so that, basically that first line, which gives uh, the easements, the grant reciprocal easements for maintenance and encroachment purposes over uh, parts five, six, seven, eight, 14 for the benefits of part four and nine, deal with part, uh, unit 53 and 55 and then a little bit later it's the same reciprocal that deals with part 57 and 59 poplar uh the addresses in the next drawing what i've done is i've tried to just take the parts that are given the easements and the encroachments sorry uh not in the next drawing go back sorry i denoted them one and one a so if you look at one a so i've just color coded the portions that are uh for turning radius and things like that and access to the rear yard. Uh, I've, I've color coded those to be, uh, to, to be noted to the properties that they're associated with. So then if you go to the next page, there we go. All right, on the left-hand side is that first line is a proposed to provide a right of way for pedestrian vehicular access and parking over parts seven, eight and nine, which are actually colored in for the benefits of parts 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, and 13, which are on the left-hand side, which are outlined in orange and green. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. okay. So that is for 53 and 55 poplar. And then you go to the next uh, number three, drawing number three. This is the, uh, the second line here. It also is a pros to provide a pedestrian right-of-way over part 14, which is shaded in the light purple for the benefit of parts two, three, 10, 11, and 13, which is outlined in the orange, which is unit 57. So okay. unit 57 and unit 53 share a laneway to their backyards. And so all this is doing is giving unit 57 uh, the ability to walk on part 14 to get to the backyard. If you go to the next drawing, Great, we deal with units 57 and 59 in the same way. Basically, parts proposed to provide a right of way for pedestrian vehicular access and parking over parts 10, 11, and 12, which are shaded in the orange and, uh, the, uh, and the green, the light green, for the benefit of parts four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 14, which are outlined in the yellow and the light purple basically giving uh, turning radius access for access to the parking in the middle of the property. And then the last one, uh, drawing number five, uh, to provide a pedestrian right of way over part 13 for the benefit of parts five, six, seven, eight, and 14, mm -hmm. thereby giving access to the backyard for unit 53 to be able to walk on part 13 to get to the backyard. Okay. The stratification, a little bit more difficult to, uh, to color code that, but the stratification 
is basically just those same parts that are denoted in that middle uh, that give the encroachments. So if you look at that first page, you've got part 12, 10, 8, and part 9. So uh, this is the drawing. So you have the, the, the draft R plans, I'm assuming, with you. And so in that is there's a drawing, a section 1-1, one, one, that shows parts 12. It, it cuts across the green and the yellow uh, portion. And it says, it, and it's looking down the driveway. So you've got part 12, you've got part 10, you've got part 8, and you've got part 9. And that is the stratification because there is an overhang. The parking is in the middle uh, of these two properties. Uh, you can see on the site plan, that first drawing, that the footprint of the of the four buildings where they are, and then there's a space in the middle, and it's sort of a courtyard parking for this back to front semi. So you've got overhangs there that stratify where those parts uh, would stop at the overhang. Anything else? Nope, that's it. I just uh, I'm, I'm looking at this draw, just the draft R plan, just to make sure. Yeah, they've got they've got three sections: section two two and section three three, defined in exactly the same way. There's an overhang, basically, for the. Uh, may I ask, does the committee have the? Uh, I'd sent. They'd asked me for the plans and the elevations, so there should be plans and elevations on your end. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a better example, or that gives you a better idea of what the building looks like. Uh, the the party wall is basically on the th second and third floor. It sort of floats in the air above the parking area. We chose this design to be able to give the rear unit a nice sized lawn and the front unit just a uh, outdoor amenity space in terms of a balcony, instead of providing all the parking at the rear uh, of the building and then making the whole building feel like you're living in a parking lot. Anything further, Mr. Bass? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Wildman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could ask the planner why we are conditioning that they have to comply with the Ontario Building Code as a condition of this uh, this file. Um, seems to me that the Ontario Building Code Act stands on its own and doesn't bear repeating or require repeating in our conditions. Moment, Mr. Wildman. Okay, condition three. Let's work yeah. a lot. Uh, so the condition came from uh, building code services, and it's re with respect to common walls, I imagine. Yes. Yes, but the the building code act is there whether there's a severance or uh, or a minor variance or what have you, because it is it is a statute. We don't need to impose a condition to comply with a statute. I did, and I'm, 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 I think it's a bit of overkill myself. And um, if, if you're not comfortable with imposing it, I planning department is okay if it will be removed. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I just, you know, I don't think there's harm leaving it in there, but I just don't want to start going down the path of adding things in that are already reg heavily regulated under statute. So I would suggest it could likely be removed. Thank we you. Can, uh, we can delete a, a number three. Thank you. Right. May I ask just a quick question? Then item two also asks the chief building official or designate that the party wall meets the building code, uh, which requires a one hour fire separation. Um, we've, we've, we built it in that way. That was uh, actually, you know, at the, the permit drawings, our, our building permit drawings obviously would have denoted that. So we built it to that standard. Do we have to prove that again, or is it, I'm not quite sure of the process there. Ms. McEula. Uh, so when the application will be approved, you will submit me the drawings and for the severance to be uh, re registered, we have to clear this condition because it was imposed by building those services. Yes. Okay, so the building, so okay, okay, that's fine. So, if just the, the yeah, sorry, if your drawings were uh, obviously you built it, so they satisfied the barcode at that time, okay. so you will be able to clear it for sure. 
Okay. Okay. That's that's all. Okay. That's the process. It's just sort of okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Miss okay. McLean, questions, comments. You. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, on what, well, when we're dealing with the conditions, the proof of independent services is that to all four units. I'm just asking the planning staff: is that to all four units, or is it independent services to the long one long semi and to the other long semi? That's for one long semi and the other long semi because the other one will be part of the easement. Okay, so so independent services to the two units of the, the long build. semi. Yeah, okay. Yeah, to the buildings itself, not okay. to the dwellings. Yes. And I guess the um, the joint use again, is it for all, two, is it for the two long semis or is it all four units? I, I get sort of, are there two joint use agreements uh, required or? This time it will be again uh, the common one because there are driveways and landscaping involved in, gotcha. in the shared property. Okay. And the condition for the tree agreement to plant the trees, how is, is, that, a, is that an agreement registered on title? How is that enforced? How, do, how does the applicant comply with that to get, to get it cleared for the, the severance? I believe Ms. Young can answer this question. Thank you. Ms. Young? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, this one, I've already had discussions with the applicant, and I think he is ready to plant trees as soon as the, uh, the ground <laughs> thaws, essentially. So this condition is in there. He already has a plan submitted. So this is just to ensure that they are planted. And I expect that to be within the year. So... Um, it shouldn't be a problem to clear this condition. Okay. All right. So the sale will be held up until he can virtually plant the trees, I guess. That's as, like, I, it's just agrees to plant trees. So what is he just write a letter in and say, I agree to do this or it's, you're not requiring an, an agreement to be registered on title or anything. No, it's not on title or anything. He already has the tree planting plan. So I believe the condition here was just to abide by the tree planting plan and um, plant what he said he was going to plant. Um, so just sending me proof of planting or letting me know when it's done and I can go see it is enough to clear that. And then you'll clear it with the uh, committee staff. Yes. Okay. So, so, so can I just add, so that is a good question. So, but that's not going to be done till the spring. So if I have a sale for this particular unit in the next three weeks or so, um, would I have to wait till the spring to plant the tree, to clear the conditions so the property can be severed and then we can refer to it as, as, a, as a property on for, for real estate purposes or for selling purposes? I don't um, believe this wasn't a development agreement. So I don't think that it affects a sale. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else can speak to that. But. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, I, I think that's the crux of Ms. McLean's issue is that um, there's two ways you can go. You can wait and clear the condition and then the clock ticks down as you clear the condition and you don't do anything else. Or alternatively, you can enter into some form of an agreement satisfactory to, I guess, the city uh, that says that, yes, I will, I will guarantee that I will do that. And it, it in and, uh, in and of itself satisfies the condition because there's now an agreement to do it. Um, so I, I don't think you can clear your condition um, with, with um, unless you've done what you have to do or if you enter into an agreement. I think those are your only, only your two options in, in, in my view. And, and uh, I, I, I think that was the crux of what Ms. McLean was getting at. And just could I just ask a question on the strata? So the property line um, will stay in place, and the cantilever portions over the parking spaces is what. So so the strata is just defining the 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 ground um, height of the parking spaces. Am I right there? Or? Exactly right. That's exactly right. That's all it is doing is defining the height of the parking space. And there's no, is there's a cantilevered over the back units over the, the pedestrian walkway, but, but that's not, doesn't affect ownership. No, exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions and comments from 
members of the panel. Okay. Um, we've gone over the, <clears throat> the conditions. I think, I think we've I think we have the strata title figured out now. Thank you, Ms. McLean. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> glad to see the trees are being planted. Hopefully this doesn't cause you any problems. I guess you're gonna have to deal with that though. Okay, and so I, I will, I'll maybe speak to Ms. Young just uh, regarding that. If there is just a letter that she requires from me saying that I will yeah. abide by this, then that's that's the case. But I, I don't think I can wait till the spring, but I'll resolve that with, uh, with the city and Ms. Young. Okay, all right. Okay, and we've... We've discussed the change in the zoning and the changes that were necessary to the parts. All right. Regarding these, these uh, consents to sever for 55, 53, and 59 and 57 Poplar Street, all in favor of the consents as amended. Your consents are approved. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. And that concludes, oh no, we have one item left. We have one other, that concludes the variances and consent applications that we're dealing with today. We have one item left uh, on this regards, 443 and 445 Dawson Avenue. Uh, it's a uh, it's a proposed proposal to uh, change uh, change a condition uh, request from the uh, from the property owner at 443 445 Dawson Avenue. I believe that's Mr. Warren. Is he there? Oh, yeah. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee. Your address for the record, Mr. Warren, please. 443 Dawson Avenue. All right. Okay. Please, uh, please explain your request for a change of condition, Mr. Warren. Um, we have lived at this property, 443 Dawson Avenue, for nearly 33 years, and we wanted to provide our daughters and grandchildren with a beautiful home, including safe and enjoyable rear yards. We love the neighborhood. We take pride in keeping the neighborhood neat and tidy. We're not interested in developing, severing, and selling. We're interested in selling and in, in, um, developing and living here for many years to come. Since we are not experienced in this sort of project, we relied completely on the city and city planners to guide us in every step of the way. We met with city planners on multiple occasions in person pre-COVID beginning at City Hall in 2019 to review the lot, the building rules, parameters, and recommended minor variance applications. We carefully followed all the rules, submitted all the applications for permits, completed all the inspections and built the homes on the lots, exactly as they were presented to and approved by the Committee of Adjustment and City Planners. We spent thousands of dollars to provide a tree disclosure report, as well as protective fencing around the trees in various locations of the property for the duration of the construction phase. Now that the project has been completed, it's absolutely gut-wrenching to suddenly be told that in order to sever the lots, we must now give up portions of the property that include the very trees we were asked to protect as well as the rear yard that the homes were purposely designed and built to enjoy. It seems that everyone along the way, uh, including the various city planners and committee of adjustment members, missed these extremely significant corner conveyances that should have been declared at some point very early along the way before the planning phase even began. If these conveyances had been brought forward in the beginning, we could have modified the building lot and plans to accommodate these requests. However, now that the homes have been built, there's nothing we can do. To convey the rear corner now, which is condition number four, would mean the elimination of a significant portion of the rear yard, new privacy fence and deck, which would have a devastating effect on the homeowner's ability to have and enjoy a functional rear yard. And this would be contrary to the intended purpose of the project, which was to build two homes, each with a small but beautiful and functional rear yard. I recently measured the effective corner site triangle at the intersection of Wesley and Kirkwood. This is the corner in, in question. Including the boulevard and sidewalk, there's an effective corner site triangle that runs 13 meters north along Kirkwood and nine meters west along Wesley, making a clear corner site triangle of 13 by nine. 
In addition, there's a bike path as well as further traffic calming measures along Kirkwood Avenue, which keep all traffic even further away from the corner in question. A driver traveling east along Wesley and stopping at Kirkwood can easily look north along Kirkwood and see not only the intersection of Byron and Kirkwood, which is 200 meters away, but also the intersection at Richmond and Kirkwood, which is approximately 400 meters away. As the Planning, Infrastructure and Economic Development Department states in their comments and rationale, the existing corner site triangle at the intersection of Kirkwood Avenue and Wesley Avenue meets the requirements for section 57 of the zoning bylaw regarding motor vehicle safety. Thus, the existing three meter by three meter triangle is adequate and is not a safety concern. The same department notes that the request to increase the triangle to five by five is not immediately necessary, but is being requested for potential future flexibility in the evolution of Kirkwood Avenue. Thus, the department states that the larger corner site triangle is not even needed at the present time. In conclusion, since there is no safety concern with the existing three by three corner site triangle, which is effectively 13 by nine, and it meets the current section 57 zoning bylaw requirements, and there is no immediate need to increase the corner site triangle. And since the homeowner diligently consulted with city planners and the committee of adjustment, followed all the guidelines, bylaws, permits, rules, et cetera, during the building process, we respectfully ask for some discretion with respect to condition four and ask if this corner site triangle could remain as the already existing three by three to allow the homeowner to enjoy the use of the backyard and deck that was carefully planned around the existing trees and rear yard parameters that were previously approved by the committee. If at a later date, Kirkwood Avenue is further developed and there is a need to increase uh, the corner triangle, I'm all in favor of safety and we would agree to that. In the meantime, preserving the ex existing rear yard will allow for tremendous use and enjoyment for the homeowner. During the past two years, we've all suffered and lost a lot of things due to a situation that is beyond our control. Making the decision to maintain the existing three by three corner site triangle in condition number four is something that is within our control and would make a huge difference to our daughter. I believe that the mental and physical health and well being of our daughter and her children is far more important than having a large empty corner that serves no immediate purpose. And so I have my daughters with me. And Olivia is the current owner, and Erica is the future owner. I might also add uh, this is my first time going through this, and, and this particular property was very confusing for a lot of people. Um, we had to request a reduced lot area as a minor variance, a reduced rear yard setback. The property is surrounded by three streets. Uh, there was also an expropriation along the Kirkwood side. There was an existing corner site triangle on the, on the corner that we're in discussion now. There's a fire height on the, on the property and um, we have no sidewalks, no curbs. We have a ditch out front. So we had all kinds of obstacles to try to overcome as well as uh, trees, mature trees in three corners of the property. And so we did our best to preserve the trees, deal with the property, and uh, this, this increase in the quarter site triangle uh, sort of defeats the entire purpose of, of the project. So I'm wondering if there's any way possible um, to leave that. I know there, I, I think there's some flexibility in that corner site triangle as a, a range between three meters and 10 meters. I'm wondering if we could um, have committee uh, agree that that could remain the three by three that exists now. Mr. Warren, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, you have a copy of our decision dated um, from March yes. 2021, correct? Yes. Okay, and in that decision, there are uh, there are conditions uh, which yes. are requested by the planning department, including including the ones that you'd like to have deleted four and five. So as of yes. last March, you knew that those conditions were part of the decision, part of the decision agreement, correct? Yeah, so I can explain so, what happened. So now, just hang on. And now all of a sudden, several months away from having to convey these properties to the city, you're asking us for relief. This, um, you know, you didn't, you had the appeal to, you had the opportunity to appeal those conditions 
when the decision when the decision was in your hands and you didn't correct yeah so i can okay. explain all right no no i want to hear from mr hamilton mr hamilton the department has been request has received this request from the property owner and let's see the department's re response thank you mr chair we would prefer that the conditions remain as they are provided in the original decision. Uh, the reason that they are included uh, in severances are mainly for safety reasons as the applicant has correctly stated, but also for the evolution of arterial roads, um, which, sorry, I forget the name, uh, which Kirkwood is in this case. Um, Annex one of the official plan does allow us to take uh, corner site triangles as part of development approval. So. I believe that this is the appropriate time to do it uh, rather than in the future when Kirkwood is eventually um, redeveloped. There are alternatives as well to replace the fence with chain link fencing. Um, we are proposing a modification to the original condition to allow the trees and vegetation to stay because those do offer a benefit to the property, of course. Um, so with the amendments, we would prefer that condition four and five remain. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Ms. McLean, you have a comment, question? Um, I just, just to clear it with Mr. Hamilton or just to clarify with Mr. Hamilton, in addition to the existing corner, corner site light um, triangle that's already been taken, you want an additional five by five at the corner of, of Kirkwood? I believe it's to total a five by five triangle to you, Mr. Chair. Um, so it would be an additional two meters is my understanding for a total of a five by five triangle. This would be similar to the one that exists on the east side of Kirkwood. Um, the property at this intersection has a similar one. And, and would this uh, road widening, uh, could this road widening, or this corner site triangle, sorry, uh, have been taken at building permit time? I, I don't believe so. Um, the official plan does say development application. Uh, so I believe that the intention is to have it dedicated here. I, I'm so not we're, I guess we're post development. That's what I'm trying to see. We're post development. The, the building has been built and then I, I, I have some sympathy for the applicant. And then all of a sudden there's further land that's being taken after, after it's already been built. But um, that was my, that was my question. Thank you. Mr. Warren. I would like to back up, sir, and apologize for what happened last March. Um, when I submitted my application for reciprocal severance, I met with a city planner, and I was told at that time that since the properties were built, I had already met all the conditions. And I asked, should I have someone represent me when I go to committee to sever? He says, no, you've already met all the conditions. The only, and I, and I believe this is in the notes that I submitted uh, for this recent uh, meeting. Uh, so I was told the only additional requirement would be a noise attenuation study. So I, I agreed to the conditions. And now this was during all the mess of the pandemic. It wasn't until uh, several weeks later beyond the appeal period when the um, surveyor could come out and take a look at it. It was at that point that he said, um, Mr. Warren, we, we've got a major problem here. And if you check my email chain, I was, I was in, in immediate contact with Mr. Nadeau at that time. And then we had emails back and forth through the spring, through the summer, into the fall. And um, he got a promotion and then my emails continued with, uh, with his replacement. So um, yeah, I have been trying to get this resolved sooner rather than later. And uh, it's a, a series of issues that I've had with the property and pandemic and, uh, and everything else. So I do apologize for having to come back again. It was a costly mistake for me. I had to reapply with another 900 and something dollar fee. And I apologize for that. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Ms. McLean. Uh, thank you. Just another question. I do, the plan I have in front of me is the uh, it, it, original survey plan showing the division law of the semi-detached. Um, do you have a plan that you can show us where the, this deck is? And, like, what is the impact of this additional um, two meter by two meter triangle then that, on Kirkwood? So the, um, the existing three meter by three meter 
which uh, takes out a chunk of 4.5 square meters out of that corner. I, I don't have a, a plan handy, so I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but takes out 4.5 square meters. The expansion would go to five by five, which would be 12 and a half square meters. The um, 12 and a half square meters, the, um, you can see the yard is very, very tiny to begin with. And so what we had on the right, so thank you for that diagram, what we have on the right, top right corner, is the play area and actually another tree in that corner as well. So you can see we'd have a very tiny wedge-shaped rear yard if we were to try to meet this uh, new condition. And we'd also lose the, the fence and the, um, the privacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we'd lose that whole right side of the fence. What's the data on this uh, on this survey draw or this drawing? Mr. Chair, I found this plan from 2019 when it was heard. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one moment. And the deck is actually, um, I think the sketch there is just a sketch. The actual deck is a little bit further to the right. It comes to the corner of the house and it would be within that new corner site triangle. If this is a, if this is a drawing from 2019, you knew exactly where the corner site triangles were. They're identified here on this, uh, on this, this, on this drawing from Morocco design, correct? Uh, we did not receive that, no. That was never uh, in our sketches. Nobody had seen those corner site triangles before. This is, this is your, this is, this is, the, these are the people who designed your house, correct? Yes, it was, uh, okay, Morocco uh, Design. Mr. Segreto, yeah, Mr. Segreto, yes. Okay, so Mr. Segreto has put the, the corner site triangles that are required by the bylaw on the, on the drawing. So you're telling me you didn't know those were corner site triangles? I, I'm absolutely telling you, we did. I did not see those and they were not mentioned to me. I, I, I've not seen this diagram before. All right. There were, there were parts of the development that I, um, I don't think were shared with me and obviously this was one of them. I spoke to Mr. Segreto about this and he was unaware of it as well. Was unaware of what? He was unaware of these uh, additional requests for corner site triangles. Well, they were identified in this drawing from 2019. I can see that, but uh, this is yeah. the first I've, I've seen it. It's okay. the first any, any of us have seen this. Yeah. All right. So okay. could, I just, um, could I just ask Mr. Hamilton, um, if these are conveyed to the city, uh, is the applicant obliged then to remove the fence and cut down any trees or what's the process? So through you, Mr. Chair, currently the condition is worded that anything existing will have to be removed. That will include the fence, the deck and the trees. Um, given that it's a significant tree, we are proposing to allow the tree to remain. Um, I know that there are cases where this happens in other places where we allow the um, trimming of the bottom portion of the tree to help with uh, the visual impacts while allowing it to stay in the corner site triangle. So that is the amendment that we're proposing to make here. Okay. All right. There would actually be uh, a third tree brought in. Um, there's a third, there are actually three trees in that corner site triangle if we increase it to five by five. So there are, Mr. Hamilton, just to, just to clarify. So there are Sight line issues right now on this this property at those at those two corners, or they're not so existing issues. As if we have a high number of accidents at this intersection. Well, it's just existing issues which re, which would require the removal of the fence and the and the removal of the deck and the removal of trees. Yes, correct. So those 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 issues have been identified. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it would, it would, the elements that would be an issue for the clearing of the conditions and the dedication of the triangle would be the deck and the fence uh, as currently built. The that's, tree is not. So that's that's standard operational procedure for the city when it's when it conveyances. 
like this <clears throat> takes place. That is correct. Those are standard conditions that we apply to all consents on corner lots in addition to section 57 being a part of the zoning bylaw and okay. applying to all corner lots as well. So these kinds of conditions have been in the books for a long time. Correct. Okay, all right. Oh, um, excuse me, Mr. Hamilton. Um, I think you had mentioned in one of your comments that the, the current three by three is adequate and currently not a safety concern. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, not that it's not a safety concern. It does comply because there are discrepancies between the engineering requirements, the official plan and the zoning bylaw. They all require us to take different size corner site triangles. Um, they, the eventual size that is taken is determined by engineering requirements based on the types of roads that are involved at the intersection. So at the time of the consent, the five by five was deemed to be appropriate. And that was last year yes all right it was, it was never mentioned uh, to us at all um the other question i have is if if we had left the old house as is if we had built a single instead of a semi uh, and we would not be required to sever or not be trying to sever at this point uh, would that have affected that three by three or would it still remain a three by three that's not before us today. That's a what if. What we're dealing with is your situation. Anyway, I think we've heard, uh, we've heard what we need to hear on this. We're going to, I think, reserve on this and discuss this at the end of the hearing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know within, uh, I guess, within, uh, within 10 days of, uh, of, of the hearing today. Thank you very much for your time and your input, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And that is the, the end of this hearing as we are now done with the agenda. And uh, I'll see you folks.